Happy, happy Saturday. Today is July 10th. I feel like I need to start time stamping our videos because the cases that we are covering are moving so fast. It is an extra special meeting of the law nerds. Wait, my gavel. We are calling this meeting to order to talk about Halo Beauty versus ex-business partner Clark Swanson. This feels like a sequel book to a series that we were really into and we only got the first book and we were like waiting for the next book to come out. That's how I feel today. Let me know how you feel and where you're watching from. We're going to do a road so far and how we got here in this lawsuit. And then we're just going to really old school style, go through this entire complaint, pick apart whatever we see in the facts, and then talk about what the causes of action are here and how this plays with the Clark Swanson versus Halo beauty lawsuit. Because remember, Clark is suing Halo as well. So we've got a lot to talk about. It's Saturday and I see you guys coming in from all over the world. So let's just get into it, shall we? Oh, don't remember to share this out on Twitter with anyone you want to see talk about this story. I haven't seen anyone cover this lawsuit yet because literally it was filed yesterday and I have a whole lot of court alerts on because, well, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about why. We'll talk about why when we get into the road so far. All right, let's get into it. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. It is so good to see everybody. And, you know, we're here in the middle of the day. So the international crew is actually not up at 3 a.m., though I know some of you were up at 3 a.m. for our ride last night. Lots has been happening. We will um, absolutely, I've seen the news going on about Brittany. I will get to that in Q&A because I really want to make sure we keep this video tight for just this filing. So if anybody comes in and just wants to know about this, we will get to other stuff um, as we get to Q&A. As always, and I remind this every time, um, we are going to talk about creators that are, you know, uh, controversial, polarizing, I think is the word I want to use. And I appreciate everybody in the chat keeping it classy. We don't name call, we don't deride, we don't disparage. Um, we're just gonna talk about the facts and kind of the the tea that might play into this complaint a little bit because we watched all of this play out. And that's what's so interesting about lawsuits revolving around YouTube. A lot of the time we watch the videos and we watch the events unfold in these lawsuits in real time. And then we see the lawsuits. And now, unlike when this was originally filed by Clark Swanson, with this new lawsuit being filed, Toddy's back on YouTube, has come back to, from what I can tell, really positive response. My only issue with Toddy coming back is I haven't had the urge to purchase new makeup um, in probably a year. And now I'm like, oh, do I need new lipstick? I might need new lipstick. Um, I swear, every time I watch a video, I walk away wanting to purchase things, and that is my problem. Um, but you guys know from the beginning of this, I have enjoyed watching Toddy's channel. I don't think she will ever address this. In her video where she came back to YouTube, she did address how stressful lawsuits were and that she was in a lawsuit with her business partner. Yes, lawsuits are stressful. She is now in two lawsuits with her business partner, and we're going to get into that. So... We're here again. Oh, I didn't even call us to order. Uh, law nerds, come to order. Wherefore comes the case of Halo Beauty versus Clark Swanson. Let's do a quick road so far. I reminded you to share. Um, if you get unsubscribed from YouTube, just resubscribe and you'll be able to hop into the chat. We will probably bing while we're on stream and share this out with any of the creators that have been following Tati that you want to see talk about this later. Let's do a road so far. Road so far, the road so far. How did we get here? Well, we got here on this channel with the original lawsuit that kicked off all of the legal wranglings in this case, which is the Clark Swanson versus Halo Beauty case. I pull it up because this is an important part of the road so far because this was the first domino that fell. This case was filed on October 20th, 2020 at 1.49 p.m. in the Santa Monica Courthouse. Well, it was 
electrically filed. But, you know, in Santa Monica, this is Clark Swanson as an individual and derivatively on behalf of Halo Beauty, Inc., we talked about the nerdiness that is derivative lawsuits where a member of a company is suing on behalf of the company saying that other members of the company aren't doing what they should be doing. And that was alleged in this and Swanson Global Enterprises on its own behalf and on behalf of Halo Beauty Partners LLC, knowing that um, Swanson Global Business Enterprises owned part of Haley Be Halo Beauty Partners. If I say Haley, it's just going to happen. Halo Beauty, my brain just like conflagates them. Um, and they were suing Halo Beauty Inc., a California corporation, Hi Halo Beauty Inc., a Nevada corporation, Halo Beauty Partners LLC, Tatiana Westbrook as an individual, James Westbrook, Tati Halo Inc., a Washington corporation, Tati Cosmetics Inc., and Doe's. This is the lawsuit that starts. We're just going to do it again for everyone. <clears throat> la, la, la. This is a lawsuit caused by the defendant's greed. Do you remember this? This is what kicked it off. This lawsuit definitely threw around some tea. We talked about the fact that this lawsuit seemed to be half lawsuit, half just wanting to drag Tati through the mud. There were statements thrown around in here. And again, lawsuits are all allegations. They are not proven until they go before the court. Things like Tati could sell her audience anything. She doesn't even care. She's just going to throw some shit in a bottle. And um, these allegations that Tati said she had these YouTube friends like James Charles that were going to sell her products. And then it gets into the sugar bear hair drama in this complaint. So much information in this complaint. And we went through all of it. So this was October 20th. Then, then, I should say, this complaint also made a bunch of allegations about Clark, um, about James Westbrook too. And then we learned that Clark Swanson and James Westbrook had been friends, like long time friends. Then we get on October 31st, the Toddy Westbrook versus without a crystal ball KJ defamation lawsuit. And at that point we were all like, wait a second, what now? What is happening in that lawsuit, it, Toddy sued, James Westbrook sued, and, and they sued on behalf of Halo Beauty against uh, the Without a Crystal Ball YouTube channel and KJ. In that case, they alleged a bunch of statements that were said in a Pathios or Pathios, I always pronounce it wrong, a Pathios article and a bunch of YouTube videos and tweets and Facebook posts and stuff like that. In that lawsuit, a lot of the allegations of the defamatory statements lined up with things Clark was saying in his lawsuit, which at the beginning I was like, what is happening? Why do these lawsuits feel a little bit intertwined? The Clark Swanson business partner lawsuit, as we call it on this channel, the business partner lawsuit has gone fairly slowly. There's a motion to dismiss for jurisdiction, to change venue into Nevada. All that's going to be heard in September in Santa Monica. So not much has happened in that lawsuit. It's kind of been a normal and slower process. Now the defamation suit was like a gas can lit on fire. The whole thing just went and it was a flurry of legal activity, all of which was been well and thoroughly covered on this channel and many others. That case ended up settling. And we saw on social media, one of the attorneys involved in that case, Saltz, who we call Saltsy on this channel, um, talking about being in Minnesota. We were all like, what's going on with that? And then we saw um, discussions of depositions or, you know, these meetings that were happening behind the scenes. And then KJ put out a video, what, like, June 4th ish, like I'm just, just a little over a month ago saying that their case with the Westbrooks had settled, which we had been speculating about here and that she had given the Westbrooks information on the sources that were telling her the things that she was saying. Now, I don't think that all the things that she was saying <laughs> were coming from sources, but that's my opinion. I think there's still a few things in there, but you know, you got to give and take in a settlement. You got to be like, well, We'll give you some, but we'll take some. But I think that the purpose of the settlement from the Westbrook side, particularly seeing this, and I'll ask you guys what you think when we get to questions, was really to get that information if Swanson was feeding information that could be damaging to the Westbrooks or to the company to channels that were then signal boosting it. And that is something that I speculated about from the beginning of this. I said... Um, in my older videos, once that other lawsuit broke, that these statements aligned. So either 
KJ was getting information from Clark Swanson or Clark Swanson was using KJ's information to feed his lawsuit, one of the two. Well, based on KJ's statements on her channel, she said that Clark Swanson was giving her information and now we see Halo Beauty suing Clark Swanson and that information is gonna come up. It's a valid reason to settle a lawsuit to say, hey, if you give us sworn information about this other stuff going on that we're gonna use in this other lawsuit, it all makes sense. So I think we're going to find out a bit more information about that, but that's the road so far. October 20th, 2020, the business partner lawsuit pops up with, this is a lawsuit because of the defendant's greed. In that lawsuit, Swanson alleges that the Westbrooks promised him part of Tati Beauty, the makeup line, not just Halo, and that he had had 50% of Halo, but then he only ended up with a third of Halo, and they like swindled him out of a third of, out of that 50% ownership in Halo, because they promised him this other stuff over there. In that lawsuit, we were looking for all of the, you know, receipts as to that, and there really weren't, which was odd, because Clark Swanson was the corporate secretary, and wouldn't you write that shit down? But we saw it change to a third, a third, a third, Swanson owns a third of Halo, James does, Tati does. Now, what we saw in the pre-litigation documents that I covered on my channel, um, we saw that there were a change in the uh, amount of money that Swanson was putting in and then a change in the amount of work Swanson was gonna be doing for Halo. So they said, look, you're not bringing in as much money as we think, you're not gonna be doing as much work as we thought, so everybody should have a third. And that seems to be the Westbrook's side of the business partner suit. No, we didn't promise you any other uh, revenue from any other venture. We changed it for other reasons. And he's saying, no, greed. And that's where we're at with that. And we know what happened with the defamation suit. And if not, there's a playlist <laughs> if you want to see the start to finish on the defamation suit. So let's, now that we've rode so far, let's go ahead and jump in. Don't forget to do the YouTube things, the likey, subscribey things. And we will jump right in to this new lawsuit and go through it line by line. It was supposed to swoop. <laughs> I'm like, it's supposed to swoop, swoop, and then it doesn't swoop. Let's go ahead and pull this up. This was e-filed uh, yesterday at 324 Pacific Standard Time in, uh, where is this, Clark County, Nevada, which is like their eighth district. There are a lot of attorneys listed. So these are all Nevada attorneys listed. This is their firm, uh, Brownstein, Hyatt, Faber, I, I'm going to mispronounce that to Shrek. I'm sure that's not Shrek, but I've already seen Shrek and I can't unsee it. No disrespect is meant Mr. Shrek. I feel like that's amazing. Um, and then, of course, Saltsy and Queen Levine. This is going to be a problem. Hold on. I'm going to have to make this bigger intentionally so I can highlight things. There we go. Technology's hard. <laughs> So what we have in this suit is Halo Beauty Partners, LLC, a Nevada limited liability company suing Clark Swanson, an individual and former officer of Halo Beauty Partners. I wonder when Clark Swanson found out that he was a former officer of Halo Beauty Partners, because I feel like we haven't seen any news that Swanson is no longer with Halo. I don't know if Halo is still on his LinkedIn. I don't know if he found out about this contemporaneous with the filing of this lawsuit. I don't know. I don't know if they ran the settlement because he was part of Halo and Halo was suing without a crystal ball. I don't know if they ended up running the settlement by him. And through that, he learned that KJ had dimed him out or um, if he learned about that by watching YouTube videos. I don't know. But this says very clearly, former officer of Halo Beauty Partners, LLC, Swanson Global Enterprises, a Nevada corporation, and a member of Halo Beauty Partners, LLC, um, demand business court requested pursuant. We talked about this in the change of venue motions that Nevada has some really specific courts for businesses. Nevada does have a lot of businesses uh, headquartered there because they are fairly business friendly and tax friendly. So I'm not surprised that they actually have like business court in Nevada. I think it's really interesting. So introductory statement. <clears throat> what is a company to do when one of its founding members is surreptitiously trying to destroy it by greed? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I've added in my own words. Um, but there we go. Coming, coming, at, coming out hot. 
we're going to do that one more time. I, th I feel like I could do that a little deeper. We could bring a little more drama to it. So we're just going <clears> to <throat> la la. We're going to do it one more time because dramatic lawsuit readings are apparently the mood that I'm in this morning. What is a company to do when one of its founding members is surreptitiously trying to destroy it? Sue them. You're supposed to sue them. That. Defendant Clark Swanson has left the company no choice but to turn to this court to protect it from having his campaign to impugn the company's reputation and undermine its operations, all in the contravention of his duties under Nevada law. Whoop, there it is. Impugn the company's reputation. Stop working against the company that you owe a fiduciary duty to. Kind of. Tatiana Westbrook, Tati we're going with Tati, is a world-famous social media personality respected and trusted by millions for her knowledge and advice about makeup and other beauty products. Tati has developed a stellar reputation with over 12 million followers on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter combined. Because of her overwhelmingly positive reputation, Tati is the spokesperson and face of the very successful Halo Beauty line of nutraceuticals products. Damn it, we're back to having to say nutraceuticals all the time. It's such a difficult word. <laughs> it's hard for me. All the nutraceuticals. We've done this before. All the neutral, all the nutraceuticals. Uh, so much, so much. Tati's followers are primarily responsible for the company's extraordinary success, success, success since its inception. As such, Tati's reputation is so intertwined with the reputation of the company that an attack on one directly impacts the other. I mean, I don't doubt that at all. You guys let me know what you think in the comments or in the chats. But I mean, I really think that most of the people buying Halo are people that love Tati and watch her videos. Because otherwise, how are you finding it? Like, that's really, you're finding Halo through Tati's uh, social media presence and large social media presence. Tati and her husband, James Westbrook, James, Tati and James collectively shall be referred to as the Westbrooks. And Swanson created the company to develop and sell its nutraceutical line of products. Through Swan, uh, Though Swanson invested only $200,000 in the joint venture with the Westbrooks, half of which he borrowed, the shade. <laughs> the shade. We talked about this in the responses that we covered where it was... It was like, oh, he was going to do this much, and then it was going to do less, and then it was like, ugh, and then he had to borrow the money. Um, anyway, half of which he borrowed. He fully recouped his investment within weeks of the joint venture's first product launch. Further, and despite the fact that he dropped the ball on nearly every aspect of his responsibilities he promised to undertake, Swanson has profited an amount of millions of dollars from the joint venture. And we broke that down in the response to the business partner lawsuit, how much money was being distributed. And it was like multi-millions year over year. So we're talking that everybody's walked away with multi-millions of dollars from this company, which have a successful company do you, but also you got to do your job. Um, and they're alleging here that he dropped the ball. Again, lawsuits are allegations. Apparently allegations and shade. <laughs> lawsuits are allegations and shade. Let's continue with the allegations and shade. There was plenty of shade in the business partner lawsuit too. So it's, you know, shots were already fired in this case. So I am not surprised that it's just coming out hot at all. Swanson has profited an amount of millions of dollars from the joint venture. To the detriment of both the company and the Westbrooks, Swanson's failures have caused untold delays, resulted in substantial undue expense, and at times jeopardized the validity or the vitality, apologies, of the company. Still, Tati and James persevered, and the company has been incredibly successful. They're going to get into that then, I think, um, talking about what Swanson has done to jeopardize the company, but it paints the picture for the court of this is what we're dealing with. It's interesting to me too. We're just going to make a quick note. This is a separate lawsuit filed in Nevada. This is not a lawsuit that is counterclaimed or cross-claimed with the business partner lawsuit, which is interesting pulling it out. I had thought that they might do it as a cross complaint, but they are trying to move venue of that lawsuit to Nevada. And this is a Nevada company suing a Nevada resident and other Nevada companies. So it makes sense that it belongs there. But also with the derivative suit, this might just be easier to not deal with the derivative suit than tied in with the additional mess of the company, then suing one of its former board members. 
So I can understand why they then pulled this out as a separate lawsuit and filed it in Nevada. Apparently sharing equally in the company's successes was not enough for Swanson. Oh, there we go. There's the <laughs> greed. Apparently sharing equally in the company's successes was not enough for Swanson. Indeed. <laughs> see, I see it before I say it. And it's a great line. Indeed, Swanson's overdeveloped sense of entitlement and runaway greed led to a breakdown in his relationship with Tati and James. Overdeveloped sense of entitlement feels like it needs to be a t-shirt. <laughs> it really does. Oh, more shade. This breakdown led to Swanson filing a separate lawsuit, which is chock full of salacious and unnecessarily disparaging allegations against Tati. Yes, but also we kind of lived because all the tea. Lawsuits. Law <laughs> lawsuits are allegations and shade. I mean, that's really what it is. That's what it is now. <laughs> that is absolutely what it is. Um, but it was. It had quite a lot of disparaging allegations against Tati and James, for that matter, that they were broke, that they had, you know, no business lines of credit, that that Tati just didn't give a fuck about her followers, which I don't think anybody really says about her, that um, that she was relying on Jeffree Star and spelled wrong the whole lawsuit, by the way, and James Charles, and then James Charles like ran off with sugar bear hair. It was it was quite a lawsuit. Go back and watch it after you see this and see what you think when you juxtapose the two. So let's get back into this. Um, full of salacious and unnecessarily disparaging allegations against Tati. That, by the way, as I squirrel myself again, I apologize. That got picked up by like international media, that lawsuit. Um, and, and it became like this big thing. Once the defamation suit came along 10 days later, nobody gave a fuck anymore. But that original lawsuit with the, this is a defendant by the, def you know, this is a lawsuit because of the defendant's greed picked up everywhere. And I think partly because Tati wasn't on the internet at that time, it just caught fire and went everywhere, um, which was really, really interesting to see because then everybody's like, oh, and then we're over it. That's how lawsuits go. You get that first shot in there and then everybody stops covering it. So it was, it was interesting to watch that kind of blow up that way. So salacious and disparaging allegations, which is the point because that's when the media picks it up. In an effort to steal a financial interest in all previous and future non-vitamin business dealings involving her personal brand, Tati. Of course, if Swanson actually believed his alleged claims were legitimate, preserving Tati's reputation would be paramount. Well, yeah, because if you believe that you're entitled to 50% of everything being sold under the brand Tati, you want the brand Tati and the person Tati to have the best reputation ever so they sell more stuff. Everybody's waiting for like the, the eye palette volume two because it's actually a great eye palette. Um, so you want that reputation to stand. It makes sense to me. Of course, if Swanson actually believed his alleged claims, preserving Tati's reputation would be paramount in addition to filing an unmeritorious lawsuit that contained irrelevant and salacious allegations against Tati. Swanson then asked people on social media to promote it. Oh, who could that be? Swanson asked people to promote the lawsuit and it did. It took fire. Um, and in complete disregard of his duties to the company, Swanson contrived and orchestrated a media smear campaign to publicly disparage Tati and the company, all of which was designed to destroy the company. It feels like, you know what? Um, they're alleging that Swanson was like, you know what? Fuck it. Burn it down. Burn it all. Burn the boats which is not what you can do if you are actually a part of the company. You can't just burn it down. <sighs> the company is duty bound to not let these attacks go unanswered and cannot allow its very existence to be jeopardized by the malfeasance of one of its own. <laughs> malfeasance is one of my favorite words. Um, I love a good, I love a good malfeasance. As such, the company seeks this court's intervention to compensate for its damage for compensate it for the damages it has suffered and to enjoin Swanson from further engaging in his wrongful scheme. In injunctions, by the way, are the like stop, 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 stop. No more. Parties, jurisdiction, and venue. 
Halo Beauty Partners LLC is a member managed LLC in Nevada. Tati is an individual resident of the state of Washington and is CEO of the company. James is an individual state of Washington COO of the company. The Westbrook's own 66% of the company through Tati Halo Inc., a Washington corporation and member of the company. This is all the like corporate formation stuff. Swanson is an individual citizen in Clark County, Nevada. Swanson was the chief financial officer of the company and indirectly owns 33% of the company through defendant Swanson Global Enterprises. So the company is owned by companies and those companies are owned by the individuals. So it's a, that's not unusual, by the way, when you're dealing with companies that are operating um, with the millions of dollars, especially when you're talking about uh, products. At all times relevant to the company's claims set herein, Swanson was the CFO of the company. They keep saying was, they keep saying was, the company is informed and believes that SGE is a Nevada Corp. Uh, jurisdiction is proper in Nevada as the company is a Nevada company. The other party is incorporated in Nevada. Swanson lives in Nevada. Furthermore, the amount of controversy exceeds $15,000. So that's jurisdictional requirement venues proper under the law. Look, the plaintiffs can choose where they want to be. So Toddy and James can say, yeah, we live in Washington, but we avail ourselves of the court in Nevada. The, um, the company that we're suing on behalf of is domiciled here and the other person is here. So Halo Beauties is here. Swanson is here. I don't think we're going to see any jurisdictional arguments in that because they bring, they brought the case exactly to where Swanson was. I'd be surprised if anybody even bothers um, with a jurisdictional argument on this because there's really absolutely no point. Ooh, facts. Let's get to facts. We love facts. We're all about the facts. Tati is a successful entrepreneur, beauty industry expert, and social media celebrity. She has one of the world's most popular YouTube channels with more than 1.5 billion views. That is a lot of views. I think my channel, for comparison, Tati's been on YouTube a lot longer than I have and has a lot more subscribers and a lot more views. I just crossed like 11 million views, I think. So, you know, 1.5 billion is a fuck ton of views. Um, she primarily publishes edit editorial beauty content for a diverse audience comprised largely of women ranging from the ages of 18 to 45 who tune in for her opinions on makeup and beauty products. James is a lifelong entrepreneur with diverse experience in entertainment, product development, and marketing of consumer goods from 1992 to 2005. He launched three separate brands that he personally developed and were sold by hundreds of retail outlets, including Toys R Us, Home Depot, Lowe's Home Improvement. In the late 90s, he was vice president of motion pictures with Media Artist Group in LA. From 2001 to 2005, he was a commercial real estate developer in the hospitality industry. I think some of that's in there because in the Swanson suit, it was like, they couldn't do anything without me. They know nothing about business. So I think that's why um, that's in here. So... According to Swanson's description of himself on his LinkedIn page at one, I love that they're like, <laughs> what Swanson says about himself is he is a proven entrepreneur, investor, uh, proven entrepreneur, investor focused on disruptive technologies with large addressable markets, has served as co-founder and president and CEO and director of Black Line Safety Corp., a preeminent Deloitte Fastest 500, TSX 50, Profit 500, IDC Top 10, and Watch Technology Company, publicly traded on the Toronto Stock Exchange, is co-founder and executive vice president chairman of Flavocure. I can never figure out how to pronounce Flavocure. It's come up in a couple of these lawsuits, and I'm like, What? A drug discovery and research company focused on advancing treatment for oncology with research trials based at Harvard University Medical School, School is co-founder of Volato's Pharmaceuticals, a virology company with research and development focused on COVID-19, HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, and other viruses. At least it didn't say herpes. <laughs> That's a callback to last night's live. It has nothing to do with this actual video. Has a currently uh, has or currently owns and operates businesses in consumer products, financial technologies, and emerging markets. Holds a degree in economics from Pepperdine University, an MBA from I have no idea how to pronounce Graziato School of Business Management, where he graduated with distinction, and is a guest lecturer at UCLA Anderson School of Management and Pepperdine's Graziato School of Business Management. I wonder if Halo is still on his 
linked in. Is this a live link? Oh, it is a live link. I don't know. I don't think it says, um, I don't think it says Halo Beauty anywhere on there. Did it ever? I don't know. I don't know if it ever said Halo. It's definitely not on there. Interesting. Sorry, that was squirrel, squirrel. That was me just being curious. Let's get back to this. James and Swanson have been friends since 2008. In or on 2012, Swanson passed on the opportunity passed on an opportunity to invest in a social media marketing business with the Westbrooks. The company is informed and believes that Swanson passed on the opportunity to invest because he did not believe in their business and did not have 50,000 to invest. In or about 2015, after witnessing Toddy's meteoric success on social media, Swanson made a concerted effort to revive his neglected friendship with James. The shade, the shade, the shade. The Westbrooks, however, were busy producing content for Toddy's popular YouTube channel and were not particularly receptive to Swanson's overtures, due in part to his previous lack of faith in their business. I don't know what that business was. Like I wasn't, I definitely wasn't paying attention in 2012. I was like working at the DA's office and having a kid, but I'm very curious. Um, I'm sure somebody knows the, the internet has a long memory, but Swanson remained persistent in his efforts to persuade James to convince Toddy to promote a line. Oh no, not the erectile dysfunction supplements. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see Toddy trying to integrate can you see Tati trying to integrate ED medication into her content? Like how? <laughs> how would that work? Oh my God. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even, can you picture it? Can you picture it? I mean, I cannot. I cannot. Why is there always a dick in all of the content that we're talking about lately? There's a, there's there's always a dick somewhere. Good lord. Um, the Westbrooks, however, oh, but Swanson remained persistent in his efforts to persuade James to convince Tati to promote a line of men's erectile dysfunction supplements that Swanson developed. James refused. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> I can't see that fitting. Um, I can't see that fitting at all. Yeah, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't see that being a natural fit to the content. Okay, the initial business relationship. In 2016, Toddy and James were continuing to build Toddy's presence in the beauty industry. And due to Toddy's worldwide popularity, were planning to launch their own consumer brands in skincare, color cosmetics, fragrance, and fitness apparel. The company is informed and believes that Swanson was committed to to getting into business with the Westbrooks and finding a way to profit off of Tati's name and reputation. As such, Swanson pitched the Westbrooks on his operational expertise in business and knowledge of the nutritional supplements industry and convinced them that he could develop a beauty nutrition supplement for Tati to promote in exchange for equity ownership and profit participation in a nutraceuticals business. As part of his pitch, Swanson held himself out to be adept um, an adept nutritional supplements researcher who spent years developing, a, I like that they put it in quotes. They're like, we don't believe you. Years. Years developing and researching, quote, unique and exotic ingredients. And then putting them into ED supplements, apparently. <laughs> They're exotic. Unique and exotic ingredients, which he could use to build effective nutritional supplement formulas. Swanson also represented that he was a successful business person claiming that he served as a successful CEO of a publicly traded corporation and was capable of competently managing the business and its day-to-day -day requirements. I imagine the fact that they're saying that he was claiming he was capable of doing this competently means later in this complaint, they're going to say maybe not. Swanson proposed to the Westbrooks that he would be willing to put up half of the required capital to start a nutraceuticals business. Swanson also promised that he would put forth his best effort to do all of the work administ to administratively start the business and develop a hair, skin, and nail supplement business that would eventually op and eventually operate the entire company. In exchange, Swanson proposed Toddy would use her positive reputation and worldwide popular social media platforms to endorse and promote such products. Swanson's promise to the Westbrooks was, quote, 
I am going to be heads down on it full time with commitment of soul, sweat, brains, and capital. I think we saw that in either an email or a text message in the other lawsuit, because that was a very specific um, dedication. And I remember seeing it in one of the other filings, soul, sweat, brains, and capital, <laughs> not just blood, sweat, and tears, money too. Pursuant to Swanson's proposal and premises, the Westbrooks ultimately agreed to become joint venturers with Swanson to form a nutraceutical business with the caveat that each of them were still free to engage in other non nutraceutical businesses, so long as such engagement did not prevent the partners from dedicating the time and energy required to run a nutraceutical business. Each party initially was to have a specific role in this joint venture. Based on his experience of bringing products to market, James would passively serve as a sounding board and communicate Swanson's developmental process of the business to Tati due to his lack of expertise in nutritional supplements. Swanson would help develop the fort uh, due to his expertise. <laughs> I don't know where the lack came from. That's not what it says there, but you know, I, I disclose freely and relatively often that I am both ADHD and dyslexic. So when my brain adds in words, I apologize. That's why I put these on the screen so you can see what it says due to his expertise in nutritional supplements, Swanson would develop the formulas, source the packaging and raw ingredients and contract manufacturing based upon his boastings and representations about his finances. Swanson was to contribute 50% of all of the capital needed to start develop and manage day-to-day -day requirements of the business. Based on her expertise, Toddy would be responsible for providing direction on the products, approving branding and packaging concepts and marketing the products to consumers through her social media platforms. As a condition of her involvement in the joint venture, Toddy expressly required that she be the one that provide the vision for the nutraceutical products that would be sold on the basis of her name and positive reputation. To be certain, because Tati had for years spent significant effort and resources building a brand based on her name that was synonymous with the concept of quality and trustworthiness, Tati wanted to ensure that she launched the best formula possible for excuse me, a hair, skin, and nail supplement with a beautiful, luxurious cosmetic jar. Um, yeah, because you've all seen what happens when influencers launches don't go well. I imagine that that would be tremendously stressful because the amount of dunking on them that happens if they have a bad launch, a rough launch, a bad product, it just it's everywhere. There is no escaping a bad launch, especially in the influencer space of an influencer backed product. So I can understand. I imagine that that causes additional stress in launching a product more than if you're like, you know, Target. If Target has a bad product, they're like, ah, whatever, we're Target. Nobody cares. More importantly, because Tati knew that people would rely on her reputation to purchase a product associated with her name, Sight Unseen, Tati did not want people to believe that she was merely putting her name on a box of junk to take advantage of her followers and consumer uh, consumers trust customers trust that is a callback to what's in the business partner lawsuit saying that saying that Toddy said that they could just do whatever you know she could put her name on whatever and they would buy it so this is directly it seems to be directly responding to that allegation and shade thrown in the other lawsuit i love the interplays between the two lawsuits i love i do i do it's it's highly amusing as such, Toddy's goal for the business venture was to develop and sell the Rolls Royce of uh, efficacious beauty-related nutraceuticals within an industry dominated by economy brands that often fail to deliver on their promises. So high quality, high quality packaging, high quality ingredients, high quality product. The business relationship deteriorates and is restructured. The company is informed and believes shortly after the Westbrooks and Swanson embarked on their business venture, it became apparent that Swanson had significantly misrepresented his expertise and abilities in the nutri uh, nutritional supplement industry and his ability to develop the business to launch a product. Swanson began to express frequent frustration with the design and product development process by way of example, but not limitation. That means there, but wait, there's more. We're just giving you just the tip here. Uh, but wait, there's more. So they're not limiting. This is just this is just one instance. Um, I think we've just redefined the legal by way of example, not limitation, as just the tip. I'm, I'm not sorry, not sorry. <laughs> 
that's going in the Law Nerds Dictionary. Swanson claimed it was impossible to source a vitamin jar that would meet Toddy's high standards. Although the Westbrooks knew Swanson's claims were untrue, they remained supportive and encouraging of Swanson, and Swanson pledged he would continue his efforts. Over the following weeks, Swanson continued to complain that he was experiencing challenges with sourcing the packaging and building a brand identity. He would call James nearly every day saying he was, quote, in hell and constantly complained about his anxiety and struggles he was experiencing personally due to an addiction to prescription medication. We've seen that alleged in other documents as well. It was at this point that the Westbrooks began to realize that Swanson was struggling on a personal level to fulfill his duties. Over the following months, Swanson failed to complete several of the key milestones for the development of the first nutraceutical product, hair, skin, and nail booster. For example, he had not sourced packaging, sourced a contract uh, manufacturer, or sourced a supply chain for the most vital key ingredients of the Joint Ventures products. Well, if you don't have a supply chain, you don't have a product. You need the shit to get to the places to, you know, make the farm, make the nutraceuticals to get into the packaging to go out to the people like supply chain is probably the most important part of all of that. I mean, packaging is forward facing, but supply chain that gets disrupted and nothing gets sold. The Westbrooks reasonably grew concerned with Swanson's lack of progress and began to have serious doubts that Swanson was capable of achieving the outlined objectives of the joint venture and fulfillment on his promises. In June 2017, Swanson represented to the Westbrooks that he had conducted extensive research and he had secured a first-rate contract manufacturer to produce the supplements. However, the Westbrooks came to learn that this was untrue. A subsequent visit to Swanson's promised contract manufacturer by James revealed that the conditions at the facility were subpar, the workers appeared disgruntled, and the CEO was not familiar with Toddy's goals for the products. Subsequently, uh, Swanson admitted his choice for the contract manufacturer of said product was unacceptable. It's like, oh yeah, my bad. I wonder how many months that took um, to get around to, yeah, we've got it. Oh wait, just kidding. We got to start over. The company is informed and believes that Swanson's numerous failures in his misrepresent and his misrepresentations about his ability to properly develop a nutraceutical business and fulfill um, his pledged financial contributions to the business venture led to a restructuring of the business at the Westbrook's request and Swanson's agreement, which contradicts Swanson saying that the only reason the business was restructured is because the Westbrook's promised him a piece of anything else Tati made, not Halo nutraceuticals. So makeup and whatever else came next, he's saying that's why it restructured. They're saying no, you weren't doing your shit. We had to take over more work and that's why we restructured. On or about August 1st, 2017, the parties agreed to the following changes of their business relationship. One, as a result of Swanson's apparent inability to properly develop and manage a nutraceutical business, James would take over the day-to-day -day development and operations of the business and become an equal one-third owner of the joint venture. Two, as a result of Swanson's inability to meet the required and previously promised capital contributions needed to develop a nutraceutical business, Swanson's ownership interest and financial contribution commitment would be reduced to that of an equal one-third owner of the business venture, which partially relieved Swanson of his upcoming capital obligations, thereby saving him over $100,000 in cash. So they reduced the amount they were taking from him and reduced his responsibilities. Three, based on Tati's uh, indispensable role as the face of the business and brand and her commitments to both marketing said products and to substantially reduce her then very lucrative corporate sponsorships unrelated to the business venture, um, I imagine that's related to YouTube. So you can't promote everything else if you're promoting Halo. So you're going to stop taking money from sponsors and start just really promoting Halo, which makes sense. She would become an equal one-third partner in the venture. Four, Swanson's responsibilities would be reduced to only developing the formulas and handling the finances of the business venture. Additionally, it was confirmed amongst the Westbrooks and Swanson that this business venture would only be in and for the development of nutraceutical products. To be certain, Swanson had already shown the Westbrooks he had nothing unique to offer them by way of business formation, administration, and development. I don't know if that's the guy you want in charge of the money stuff, though. <laughs> that I, I, I imagine hindsight's 2020 on some of this stuff because it's hard when you're dealing with people that you like and trust. But it's like, well, is that who we want in charge of the money? We'll see what they say about that. 
and he lacked the ability to personally match the Westbrook's significant financial resources that they were dedicating to the business venture. What's more, Swanson lacked any modicum of expertise in any of the Westbrook's other ongoing and or anticipated business ventures, and his financial contribution was reduced to a sum notably less than the income Tati. What? His financial contribution was reduced to a sum notably less than the income derived from just one of her sponsored YouTube videos. Now look, he was putting in $200,000 into this business. And what they're saying is his financial contribution, 200K, was notably less than the income Tati derived from just one of her sponsored videos. Just for everyone out there that looks at me with like Pikachu shock face when I say YouTubers can make fuck tons of money, it's in a lawsuit. <laughs> Look, there's no reason to doubt these are not allegations. This is just a flex. This is not an allegation at all. This is just flexing that those sponsored videos are making uh, $200,000 per sponsored video. But you know what? If you're driving hundreds of thousands of clicks, um, then yeah, then yeah. But also, um, most of the things Tati talks about on her channel seem to then magically sell out everywhere they go. Did you guys watch her last video? All the stuff sold out. <laughs> All the stuff sold out. It is a real thing. So let's continue on with this. I like the flex in the middle of the thing. I, I do. I appreciate a good flex, but it's like, I also think legally speaking, like, for us, for the T, it's a flex. But legally speaking, it's letting the court and other counsel know, seriously, we didn't need your money. It's like one video. We do one more video. We just make up that amount. We we can create that amount of money. This isn't hard for us. So we don't really need that financial investment from you. We can cover that. We took the financial investment to bring you on as a one-third partner. You were not needed. So I don't, I think it has a legal purpose other than just being a flex. Rather, Swanson's unique contribution to the business venture was limited to his experience in creating the formulas. And from everyone I know that has used um, Halo Beauty, they say that they like the formula. So, you know, it is what it is. He might have done a good job in that one area of this and create good formulas. It doesn't mean he was good at the rest of the stuff. The company is informed and believes in furtherance of this new agreement between the Westbrooks and Swanson. Halo Beauty was organized in California and the new ownership was memorialized. And we saw that attached to other documents. In accordance with Swanson's new role uh, with the focus on developing the formulas, the Westbrooks provided Swanson with a new product development pipeline of 13 different formulas he was to develop over the following three years. That's a lot of formulas, but also three years. Um, the Westbrooks upheld their end of the bargain, investing two thirds of the development cost each time there was a capital call. James also resolved within two months, the development hurdles Swanson had failed to achieve in seven months. Yikes. It's like, and then we got it done under James's leadership. Halo beauty finally had a brand identity, trademark application, secured supply chain for ingredients, state of the art contract manufacturer and custom cosmetic jar manufacturer from a first rate and modern facility. On or about March 2nd, 2018, and in sole reliance on Toddy's marketing efforts, the business venture launched with its first product and achieved over $600,000 of direct-to-consumer sales on its first day. Yeah, that's the power of, of having a YouTuber that's respected saying, um, this is what I've made and this is why I like it. When anyone knows what it's like to make $600,000 in it, just let me know. I know there's overhead. That's not all profit. I'm just saying, let's have a conversation about it. On or about March 8th, 2018, James located a manufacturer that could provide the business venture with a, a pouching machine that would dramatically improve the Halo beauty business by creating refill packs of the supplement to reduce reliance on overseas manufacturing of the bottles, reduce use of plastics by 97%, and offer customers an option to purchase a more environmentally friendly packaged product at a discount price through a monthly subscription. Despite Toddy and James being aligned um, that it was good for the business, Swanson would obstruct these environmentally friendly efforts that went on for over a year. Now they're just, it's just like, look, man, we had ideas and you were blockading the ideas. Um, Sunday, March 11th, 2018, the new Halo Beauty brand had achieved over 1 million in sales and was extraordinarily profitable. I'm sorry. Eight, nine, 10, 11, <laughs> three days, three days from launch. 
<sighs> the product launch was not without pitfalls by way of example and not limitation. Just the tip. Swanson had made a dosage and numerous spelling errors. <laughs> me. It's me. <laughs> It's me. Swanson had made a dosage and numerous spelling errors on the supplement fax label, which resulted in negative press for the new brand. Um, the negative press was in one of the other filings. I just don't remember which one. On or about March 15th, 2018, less than two weeks after the Halo Beauty brand launch, Swanson sent an urgent email requesting all of his original investment be returned as an immediate distribution as he needed to plan to exercise stock options in his previous company, Blackline, despite his previous assurances that the Halo Beauty business venture should retain earnings for growth. He reneged and was made whole less than a month after the first product launch. So uh, legal broken down, they're saying that he put in the investment, they were going to leave investments in the company so that they could continue to grow the company, just reinvesting the profits. They wanted 13 different products over three years. That's going to take money. Just do it too. Then um, he said, I need this money back. That's in one of the other documents that I covered where they talk about in the document that he or the person he had borrowed money from was a foreign prince. Do we remember this? The person he had borrowed money from was like, pay me back. And that was part of all of this. Um, and that was covered in the uh, exclusive pre-litigation document, I believe. But they paid him back. They were like, yeah, we have the money here. The company has subsequently learned that despite Swanson previously holding himself out to be a multimillionaire who has the resources, vision, and business acumen to build a billion-dollar company, and Swanson's boasting of his access to significant personal wealth and liquid capital to invest in the business venture, Swanson had to borrow half of the 200000 initial capital contribution from someone else, a fact he had hidden or a fact he hid from the Westbrooks. When the Westbrooks learned this fact, they became concerned that Swanson did not have the financial wherewithal he previously claimed. Moreover, oh, here, <laughs> moreover, the Westbrooks learned that Swanson had instructed a third party to deposit $100,000, approximately half of Swanson's total financial contribution directly into the Halo bank account. Look, if my business partner is giving out my business bank account information, it's going to cause me concern. This was strange and inappropriate. It caused the Westbrooks to become concerned that Swanson, Swanson had brought in a secret partner into the business venture. The Westbrooks have since learned through an online search that Mr. Rijad, I think is how we pronounce that properly, is the son of an Indonesian coal tycoon. Oh, not a foreign prince. Indonesian coal tycoon. Because this lawsuit has everything, right? We've got nutraceuticals. We've got ED. We've got, we've got YouTubers. And we've got an Indonesian coal tycoon. Cool. <laughs> That's what it was. See, we, we were close. Same, same, same. Not same, same. Financial prince, business prince, real prince. Eh. Coal tycoon. Had the Westbrooks understood the true nature of Swanson's financial situation, they would not have agreed to make him an equity partner in the Halo Beauty business venture. Footnote two. Oh, is it a sassy footnote? Let's read on. Let's see if it's a sassy footnote. Swanson represented to the Westbrooks that he needed his investment in the Halo joint business venture back so that he could use the capital to take advantage of purchasing stock options that were coming due. The company suspects that Swanson's stock option story was a ruse and that Swanson wanted to distribute and pay back uh, the distribution paid back because Swanson was under pressure to repay the undisclosed loan he received from Mr. Rajad. The company believes that whichever story is the truth, both the circumstances of the repayment of the distribution and lack of additional capital um, available to Swanson to take advantage of his supposed stock option opportunity all established that Swanson was not being truthful with the Westbrooks regarding his financial capabilities and access to capital to invest in Halo. Not super sassy, just a lot more information, but that's all right. In or about August 2018, the business venture launched its second product, Kiwi Seed Skin Booster. It was an instantaneous success and remains the best-selling product of the company to date. On or around fall 2018, Swanson expressed a desire to relocate his family to Nevada, suggesting the business should be redomiciled there as well. His plans to move his family in early 2019 and then immediately move the business and locate commercial office spaces so that Halo Beauty Business Venture could hire up to 20 employees and help expand growth in the business. 
In furtherance of the plan, he proposed the creation of two companies, Halo Beauty Inc. Nevada would be created to serve as the surviving entity of an F reorganization of Halo Beauty Inc. in California. Again, oh, here we go. As a result of the F reorg, uh, the California corporation with the name Halo Beauty Inc. does not have any assets and has been considered a disregarded entity by the IRS since May 23rd, 2019. So this is not surprising. Um, F reorgs aren't weird. They're not shady. It's just saying, hey, this is a California company. Uh, The company is moving. And to move to a state where it's easier to hire employees, you have a business specific court, some tax benefits, you have a partner that lives there, and you have more space and less rent makes total sense to me. Um, So they are then reorganizing the Halo Beauty Inc. California into Halo Beauty Inc. Nevada, um, and then serve as intellectual property holding company and Halo Beauty Partners LLC is the operating entity. Again, if you guys want to get into the ins and outs of holding companies, umbrella companies and operating entities, we can do that another day. But it's not unusual to have the operating entity and a holding or umbrella company be separate um, for purposes of distributing funds differently and to prevent, you know, somebody going after the held trademarks. If there is a lawsuit or an issue with the underlying product, that all goes through the operating entity. If there's a manufacturer issue or recalls um, lawsuits, things like that. So that's not, again, not weird, not surprising. It's just the next level business shit that goes on when you have a business that could make, you know, a million dollars in three days. You need to have all of this structure in place. Halo Beauty Partners would then be given exclusive license to the intellectual property from Halo Beauty Inc. Nevada and serve as the operating entity to manufacture and sell the products. The Westbrooks agreed with this plan and committed their time, energy, and resources to establishing a corporate office, hiring employees, and further growing their business. As a result, and in conformance with the above referenced agreement, on December 18th, Swanson, James, and Toddy formed the new company in which Toddy Halo Inc. held 66 membership interests. Uh, Swanson's company held 33 membership interest. It was agreed the new intellectual property holding company, Halo Beauty Inc., would own 1% membership interest. Additionally, Toddy was made CEO of the company, James COO, and Swanson treasurer and CFO and secretary. Furthermore, Halo Beauty Inc. California subsequently prepared and filed what would be its final tax return, which is a way of telling the IRS, this company is not doing business anymore. We're done and otherwise ceased all operations and would considered a reorg in Nevada. On December 1st, uh, 31st, 2018, 10 months of business, Halo Beauty's business had generated over $9 million of revenue without any paid advertising, was debt-free and extremely profitable. That's a big, that's like business-wise, that's a, actually a really big deal to be operating at that high end of revenue debt-free and without paid advertising. But that also goes to the power of having a social media personality behind something like this. January 21st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019, the company, company grew to over 16 million in revenue without paid advertising, was debt-free and extremely profitable. So the business is doing well is what they're saying. So it's it's going all right. The confidentiality agreement. Ooh, let's talk. Oh, wait. Despite the many inquiries and repeated pleas of the Westbrooks and Swanson's continued promises, Swanson never secured corporate office space in Nevada. It's just like, wah, wah. Confidentiality agreement. Because Toddy was the face of Halo Beauty of the Halo Beauty brand and the business venture's success was tied to her promotion of Halo Beauty, uh, which was established above. The Westbrook Sonson reorg um Westbrook and Sonson recognized the importance of protecting Toddy's and ultimately the business itself, well-earned reputation. Therefore, the parties entered into an oral confidentiality agreement with the company. The confidentiality agreement prohibited Swanson from disseminating information about the company's inner workings. I mean, some of that's fiduciary too, but um, in the future, if y'all are in business, writing is preferred. (laughs) From Emily's mouth, writing is preferred. Sometimes it doesn't get done when you're working with people that you trust, but writing is preferred. (sighs) The confidential agreement prohibited Swanson from disseminating information about the company's inner workings, the company's founders, or specific proprietary information regarding the company's products. If you want a company to be successful, you just shouldn't do that shit anyway. 
Indeed, the Westbrooks and Swanson understood the importance of how communication with YouTube creators and online content creators directed the success of the company. To be certain, the Westbrooks and Swanson, in their capacities as officers, agreed to limit their communications with other YouTube creators. (laughs) I see where this is going. Do y'all see where this is going? What do we see? What do we see? (laughs) Spot it. Spot the issue. To be certain, the Westbrooks and Swanson, in their capacities as officers of the company, agreed to limit their communications with other YouTube creators and online content creators to exclude these topics. Confidentiality agreement. As such, the confidentiality agreement entirely prohibited Swanson from communicating with media outlets or social media personalities in any capacity about the company. Well, there it is about the company, its products, or any of the inner workings of the company or its related entities without the express permission of the company. Flip to, well, I have a source inside the company saying that things within the business aren't going well and that there's going to be a lawsuit. Flip to flip to that clip. To safeguard the company, Toddy was to be the, spokes, the sole spokesperson on behalf of the company to the general public and the sole messenger behind the scenes with, so, with media outlets and social media influencers, which makes sense because it keeps everything on brand and you don't have to worry about things, things going off brand. The confidentiality agreement served many purposes. Based on prior events, the Westbrooks had become increasingly concerned about Swanson's previous use of the internet and his interactions with other social media personalities that could negatively impact the company's reputation. Ooh, there's more there. There's more there. There's more there there that's not in here. (laughs) There's more there. Do you feel it? You feel it. There's more to that story. Maybe we'll learn it at some point. As such, it was agreed that Toddy, not Swanson, would be the face of the company. Why would Swanson be the face of the company? Like, why would Swanson ever be the face of the company? Um, The confidentiality agreement would also ensure that the online presence of the company conveyed unified messaging created by Tati for the brand that was being associated with her name and reputation. Do you all remember when we were reading the the pre-litigation documents and it was talking about Swanson pissing off Jeffree Star by trying to get in his car? flip back maybe that maybe that but i think that happened after this the company is informed and believes the westbrooks and swanson is intended the confidentiality agreement to be for the benefit of the company protection of its public image and confidential information based upon swanson's agreement to be bound by the confidentiality agreement the company's reliance on that agreement in continuing the uh to disclose its confidential information to swanson was thereby reasonably sound so they kept telling him all the things he knew all the behind the scenes things because they had this agreement that you're not just going to go tell everyone the behind the scenes things. All right. The business relationship fails. This is the, how many, pa- Oh, we're 14 to 28 pages. Get a snack. <laughs> we're getting into now we're getting up to speed. Now we're getting into 2020. Ever since the restructuring of the business venture in 2017, the creation of the company in 2018, the relationship between Swanson and the West Brooks has continued to deteriorate to the point of failure. Indeed, whereas the restructuring of the business venture was intended to further facilitate the reduction of Swanson's financial interests in light of his diminished operational responsibilities and financial contributions, and to facilitate the West Brooks increased, increased Lord, increased commitments. Swanson has instead insisted that he now owns an interest in all of the Westbrook's non nutraceutical consumer products and other business endeavors. That's the other lawsuit. The company is informed and believes that this dispute resulted in Swanson filing a lawsuit against the Westbrook's in California in October 2020. The company is informed and believes that, notably, it is Swanson who has continued to fail to meet his obligations to the Westbrooks and the company by way of example and not limitation, just the tip. It is Swanson who has not properly managed the company's books or timely paid invoices with vendors. Oof. Swanson also failed his obligation to meet developmental goals for the company's products, which has resulted in the business venture only launching five supplements over the first three years instead of the more than a dozen he had promised. Swanson rarely kept to his deadlines in developing the nutraceuticals products, but even when he did develop formulas, he would routinely make serious mistakes. 
For instance, Swanson developed a formula that contained an ingredient that had been tested on animals. This would have been potentially devastating to the company because Halo Beauty brand is well pub um because the Halo Beauty brand has well-publicized standards that all of its products are cruelty-free. Toddy and James had to quickly work to rectify this grievous error and come into compliance with Leaping Bunny cruelty-free standards. So that seems like a big one. Like, that seems like a big one. I feel like you would know, if you knew the industry, wouldn't you know what ingredients were on, like, a, a no-no list or like a red list of things that have been tested on animals. If you are making a cruelty-free product, I feel like that should be common within the, um, within this industry. Like for us, we're not in the industry, but within that industry, it feels like that should be well known and kind of obvious, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not. Swanson also developed a formula that, although safe, used an ingredient that allegedly reduces the effectiveness of birth control pills. Well, if you're selling supplements to women, what you don't want to do is undermine their contraception. The company is informed and believes that in or around September 2018, Swanson introduced Dr. Joseph Calderon to the business venture and requested that Dr. Calderon be hired to help write the patent and create a chemical trial study at UCLA to shore up the intellectual property rights of the company. Uh, in or around fall 2018, Tati instructed Swanson to formulate an anti-aging or anti-age nutritional supplement uh, that the company could launch in spring 2019. Well, that hasn't launched. Um, Swanson not only missed the deadline for spring 2019, but he also missed for spring 2020. What are we in? Summer 2021? Maybe spring 2021. In or around fall 2018, Toddy instructed Swanson to create a mix and stir immunity boost stick pack that could be launched to coincide with back to school cold and flu season for the fall 2019. Y'all, when did that launch? That recently launched. Um, put, put it in the chat. That recently launched. Although Swanson had the formula completely uh, completed relatively quick by October 2018, he neglected to complete the flavoring process for well over a year and did not have a completed formula for the company to manufacture until late February 2020. Oh, well, you can't start manufacturing in February 2020 because we all know what's coming next because COVID <laughs> and that's going to screw up all manufacturing worldwide. The company is informed and believes that Swanson began funding a separate business that he co-founded in the fall of 2018 called Flavor Cure Biotech. This outside venture seemed to collide with Swanson's attention to his duties and responsibilities to the company. That's a big problem. The company is, what happened to the soul, sweat, brains, capital? Um... This outside venture seemed to collide with Swanson's attention. The company is informed and believes that Flavor Cure is deep into their clinical trials at Harvard University with Dr. Calderon's assistance. However, Halo Beauty was deprived of its opportunity to enter the clinical study at UCLA due in significant part to Swanson's inattentiveness. That's a, that's a big bummer. That's, that's a big bummer. Um, that's a bummer. The company is informed and believes that his position as CFO Swanson has breached his obligations to the company in many ways. By way of example, dot limitation. Say it with me. Just the tip. He failed to properly manage the business ventures, sales tax responsibilities of collecting, reporting, oh, and payment obligation to numerous states, resulting in the company's exposure to liability for taxes, penalties, and interests. Swanson also failed to timely pay vendors even though the company had the funds to do so, resulting in the company losing favorable credit terms with its most important vendor to its financial detriment. Credit terms in something like this are going to be, you know, whether you have to put up the money up front, whether you can do it net 30 or net 60, which means the products can start getting manufactured and start going out. And then you can use the sales of the products to pay instead of having to come up with money up front. Those can be really detrimental things to a, uh, to a company. Uh, the sales tax responsibilities, it feels like that shouldn't be hard. You just have your, your accounting company just do it as a CFO. Like those are kind of basic things, but we also have the benefit of having the other documents that we've recovered on this channel that have all the email receipts of these things. So yes, they're allegations, but we've also seen more information of this in other documents that we've covered. Oh, here we go. 
Swanson attempts to destroy the company. The part that you've all been waiting for, you're all like, yeah, yeah, business reorganization. Yeah, yeah, credit terms. Yeah, yeah, manufacturing line. What happened with regards to YouTube? Whoop, whoop, there it is. All right, Swanson attempts to destroy the company. If Swanson truly believed he was entitled to a stake in all of the nutraceutical and non-nutraceutical consumer products related to Toddy, his own personal interest would be to ensure that her reputation was preserved so that these products would remain successful. I understand the argument. At the very least, as a one-third owner of the company who knows the company's success is likely uh, is directly tied to Toddy's reputation, one would think Swanson would carefully guard the company's success out of his own self-interest. Well, yes. If the company makes more, I make more. We all make more. Let's all succeed together. A rising tide, all boats and all that. But no. Aware that his claims against the Westbrooks were without legal or factual merit. <laughs> Shade. Swanson was not content to merely have his lawsuit resolved. Instead, he launched a campaign to destroy Tati and the company. The company is informed and believes that on or around May and June 2019, a notable commentary blogger. Is it a blog if it's on YouTube at this point? Is it? Are we are we YouTubers? Are we bloggers? I guess KJ was a blogger before, right? I don't know. We'll go with I, we'll, they say blogger. <laughs> a notable commentary blogger named KJ began disseminating critical statements about the Westbrooks and the company. Oh, yes, we know exactly what they are. They're all contained in that defamation lawsuit. <laughs> We've read them all. Um, on her blog, patheos.com. Ah, oh, that's why blogger, because patheos, patheos, patheos.com was the uh, original thing. I don't know if that's hers. I think it's a lot. She was a writer for them, I think, but we'll see. Um but yeah, the Patheos article seemed to be the big one that was the original problem in the defamation suit. It was the one that came up first before all the videos. Uh, throughout her social media and on her YouTube channel called Without a Crystal Ball, the company is informed and believes, yeah, because she told you. <laughs> because she told you, Diane has confirmed she was a blogger when all of this started. So um, yeah, because she told you, yes, she, it, the company's informed and believed because they sat down and had a conversation according to KJ's own video on her channel. The company is informed and believes that Paulson made several disparaging statements and assertions that were critical of the company and the Westbrooks, including, but not limited to, again, just the tip, the company products are snake oil and junk vitamins. There is zero testing to show that the products can do anything. The company's products are harmful to human health. The company manipulated its customers into buying the company's products. The company is financially worthless. And the company's products seemingly violates federal law by not having approval from the FDA. Wait a second. Vitamins don't have to be approved by the FDA. <laughs> right? I mean, that leaves out all the things she said about Tati and James, but this is a lawsuit between Halo and Swanson, so I get it. There was more. Paulson, ah, Paulson almost be, also made numerous statements about the Westbrooks, C-E-G, other lawsuit, their character, their professional credentials, and their trustworthiness. KJ also made numerous statements about Swanson, his professional credentials, and trustworthiness. Yes, they were they were critical at first, and then they were glowing. As a result of these statements and others, the company, with Swanson's consent, and the Westbrooks sent four cease and desist letters. Here, here we go. <laughs> Into the fray. Into the fray we go. As a result of these statements to others, the company, with Swanson's consent, because Swanson was part of the company, I imagine they sat around and had to go, uh, this is damaging to the company. We have to deal with this. And Swanson went, yeah, agreed. The Westbrook sent four cease and desist letters over the next few months and began drafting a complaint to file a lawsuit against KJ in the District Court of Washington, which was then filed on like Halloween. Even though the lawsuit against Paulson sought to protect the company's brand and Toddy's reputation as face of the brand, Swanson opposed the lawsuit. In fact, he remarkably claimed that the lawsuit was one of brazen self-dealing. Oh, Behind the scenes, Swanson was like, we're cool with the cease and desist, but we're not cool with the lawsuit. So when they were discussing this as a company, this sounds like Swanson was like, 
No, this is just y'all trying to protect yourself. This is essentially James Spears using lawyer money on PR. I wonder why he didn't want them to file the lawsuit. Because this was getting filed after his lawsuit was filed. I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder why. Swanson even deprived the company of the ability to pay attorney's fees associated with litigation, forcing the burden upon the Westbrooks to protect the company's reputation and the reputation of its spokesperson. Oh, there's a footnote about FDA approval. Wait a second. Swanson voted against Halo paying the lawyer fees in the defamation suit? What? Because I always assumed when we talked about this, I was like, look, they filed it on behalf of Halo. They're protecting Halo's reputation. They're protecting their reputation. Halo can pay for it. So it doesn't matter. This company is just going to be running out of money. But no, but no. Swanson said, no, the company cannot pay for the defamation suit because it's one of, what do they say in this suit? Quote, brazen self-dealing. Damn, that's cold. So what we're seeing is that he's talking shit about the company and the Westbrooks to KJ. KJ's blasting it all over the internet and ignoring four cease and desist. They're forced to sue. And he's like, you can't use the company money for it. Fucking hell. That would be so stressful. Yikes. This lawsuit against Paulson was ultimately dismissed without prejudice for want of personal jurisdiction in Washington. As a result, the Frederick District Court never reached the merits of the action. Accurate. The Westbrooks ultimately came to believe that, based on the nature of the information that Paulson was disseminating, that Swanson was surreptitiously giving KJ information and making disparaging comments about Tati and the company to KJ that would be harmful to the company. Well, here's where that settlement agreement's sure coming into play. <laughs> <laughs> Whoop. I think we're going to find out a little bit more about what they know. Let's find out together. All in an attempt to destroy Toddy's reputation and wrestle away ownership in the company he had co-founded. The company is informed and believes, right, because conversation. When Swanson was questioned by others about whether he had communicated with Paulson, he denied having any substantive discussions with her concerning the company or Tati. Well, that's not denied. That's not denied. That's, 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 interesting. This is not denied having conversation. This is denied having substantive conversations. It's no, no, we talked just not about this. Um, wow. And I saw someone in the chat say it and they hit the nail right on the head saying, maybe this is why KJ was so confident with the four cease and desist that they wouldn't sue. Um, sucketh the pickle because if Swanson is telling the Westbrooks, you shouldn't file this suit. The company's not going to pay for it. And then if we make the logical jump, this is supposition that Swanson's telling KJ, oh, I won't approve them to sue you. It might make the brazenness of the, they're never going to sue me, make a whole lot more sense. <laughs> when you say make it make sense, the the partner in the company saying, um, yeah, we're I'm not approving them to sue you. They're not going to use their own money to sue you supposition on my part, it makes it all make a lot more sense. Oof. Oof. Let's keep going. There's more. The company is informed and believes that the truth is, as has since been confirmed by KJ, this is where that settlement agreement comes in. This is why, when, when people are like, why did this settle? This is why the defamation suit settled. This information is why the this is why this settled. Because this makes sense. Because now they have all the information on Swanson and they have the person saying, oh yeah, let me tell you what I know. Swanson repeatedly disseminated disparaging information to KJ about the company, Tati and James, despite the confidentiality agreement in which Swanson agreed not to do so and with the intent to harm Toddy Westbrook and deprive the company of its spokesperson. And, you know, KJ made a good target for that because she was already talking shit about KJ, about uh, Tati. She already had kind of a bee in her bonnet about Tati before this lawsuit went down and was already covering that. So it makes sense to just find the person on the internet that already seems to dislike the person and be like, hey, let me tell you what's going on behind the scenes. And we know that KJ loves 
sharing a source and having inside information. You you get that there's a little bit of like, he, 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 with that, just from the videos that I have seen, personal opinion. The company is informed and believes that at the beginning, uh, beginning in or around April or May, Swanson began communicating extensively, oh, they say extensively, with KJ regarding the company, the beauty products, and the Westbrooks. The company is informed and believes that all these communications occurred via telephone calls, emails, and private messages on social media platforms. The co- I'm going to read into this for a minute. The company is informed and believes, this is me, supposing that this could be the case. This is speculation. This does not say that here. This is me supposing that in the settlement conversations, um, the evidence of the telephone calls, emails, and private messages might have been forthcoming because why would the Westbrooks just believe what KJ says without also seeing it for themselves? I imagine that they have seen it for themselves. The company is informed and believes that Swanson knew what he was doing when he contacted KJ. Prior to his communications with KJ, she had already published over 50, well, there it is, already published over 50 videos concerning the Westbrooks. Remember last night when we were talking about the Cardi B lawsuit and it was over 38 videos? We're 50 videos in before Swanson ever contacts her. We should have just kept reading. We kept supposing we should have just kept reading. Over 50 videos concerning the Westbrooks that were not favorable to the company or its spokesperson, Tati. Swanson was aware of KJ's prior videos. Swanson was aware that the videos were damaging to the company's reputation. In fact, Swanson had previously worked with the Westbrooks to try to get Paulson to remove the videos. Wait, what? What? I hope we find out more. Um... Swanson had previously worked with the Westbrooks to try to get Paulson to remove the videos and statements from social media by approving the cease and desist letters. Nevertheless, the company is informed and believes that Swanson initially contacted Paulson under the false pretense that he wanted to learn more about KJ's article published in or around May 2019 concerning James. Oh, the article that said the shit that ended up in the Swanson lawsuit? That one? That one? The article that reads like the things Swanson said about James in his lawsuit, that article, no, I wonder why. I wonder why he was so curious. Ugh. You can still find that article. It's been taken down, but you can still find it if you're curious. But it 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 lines in because the defamation suit lined out what that article said, and it lines up with what Swanson said in his lawsuit about James. Ugh. Okay, which articles were removed from the internet in or around September 19th due in part to the cease and desist letters the company served on Patheos and could only be found through web archive. So Patheos took them down, not KJ, because they served a cease and desist on Patheos. And I imagine speculation that Patheos went, we don't want any of this smoke. Get Stop it. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. <sighs> okay, wait. Um He contacted KJ under the false pretense. I love Squirrel. I love that we're finding out essentially what they learned from KJ because we know that KJ in her video said, I was contacted by sources. I told the Westbrooks that I was what the sources told me. And one of those sources is Clark Swanson. And now this lawsuit has a bunch of very detailed information about KJ's conversations with Clark Swanson. So, so here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. (sighs) Here it is. And you guys, while we're talking about this, just a reminder, I know that KJ is a polarizing figure around the social medias, but we are just talking about what we've seen, what we've heard, what we know, and what we've learned. No name calling, no diagnosing, none of those things. I see that come up sometimes in the chats. We're just talking about what we've seen, the statements we've heard, videos we've seen, and what this says, but none of the name calling. Thank you. Let's resume. Let's resume. Nonetheless, the company is informed and believes that Swanson initially contacted KJ under the pretense that he wanted to learn more about the article and to discuss the benefits of Halo products. Like, did he want to contact her and say, hey, (laughs) I, I created this formula. Stop knocking on it and calling it snake oil. I did a great job because there was a turnabout at some point where KJ went from dogging Swanson to thinking that Swanson was actually pretty great and that the Westbrooks were awful. Interesting incident. 
The company is informed and believes that it quickly became clear that Swanson intended to disseminate company's non-public confidential information to KJ to damage the company's reputation and Toddy Westbrook's ability to promote the products of the company. Oh my. The company is informed and believes that as an example, just a tip. James had made Swanson aware of confidential information that KJ had recently removed numerous negative videos about the company and Tati after another social media personality had successfully reached out to Paulson on his own and requested her to do so. Wait, who reached out to Swan? Who reached out to KJ and told her to remove videos about the lawsuit or no remove videos about the Westbrooks because a lawsuit was coming. Wasn't it James Charles? Weren't there videos of her saying James Charles contacted me to ask me to take these videos down? So James Westbrook told Swanson that James Charles reached out to KJ, like the amount of conversation behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah. The chat's like James Charles, James Charles. This is going to get very confusing between James Westbrook and James Charles right now. Y'all are like Charles, 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 Charles. Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure I remember things right and hive mind. Somebody's going to clip this. I'm waiting for drama and opinions to just line this all up with the video <laughs> clips of like, and James Charles contacted me. I've received, they're never going to sue me. I'm just waiting. Okay. So the T, the T in all of this is so, there's so much information here. Now we know what this, now we know why the settlement agreement, the settlement agreement makes all of the sense in the world. So James Westbrook told Clark Swanson that Paulson had removed negative videos after um, James Charles, well, another social media personality, we believe to be James Charles here on this channel, but another social media personality had successfully reached out to KJ on his own and requested her to do so. Swanson then used that confidential information and told KJ that James Westbrook had convinced that social media personality to contact KJ and tell her to remove prior videos with damaging remarks about the company. This statement was completely untrue as James had not directed said social media personality, Charles, to reach out to KJ, but disclosed to Swanson that the social media personality, Charles, had initial initiated contact with KJ out of fear that the company's anticipated lawsuit against KJ would potentially disclose their family member as one of K as one of Paulson's sources of information. So social media personality is worried that Oh, there is a lot here. Social media personality is worried that a lawsuit with Swanson would out a family member of theirs that was one of Paulson's sources. Was James Charles was was James Charles's mom talking to Paulson? Is that what was happening? People are like, no, his mom, his mom. Oh my. <laughs> okay, so wait, we're gonna back this up. Because there's a lot in this, there's a lot in this paragraph. So you guys are like James's mom, James's mom, James's mom. Look, if James's mom was talking shit about the Westbrooks to KJ after by sister, like I get it, because I get because mom, because I get it. But okay, so here's what I think we're we're learning from this. James Westbrook was aware that James Charles reached out to KJ and said, please take the videos down. You're going to get sued. I know there's video clips talking about it. I remember seeing the clips of this person reached out and asked me to take them down. Um, and you guys are in the chat confirming that KJ has talked on videos about talking with James's mom. Okay. So there we go. And then Swanson tells KJ by the way, the reason, this is me trying to piece this together. By the way, the reason that James Charles reached out to you is because James Westbrook like sent him to do that. Wasn't there a video where KJ was like, oh, fuck that. They're now trying to get people to get me to do things. I think there was a video about that. So they're saying that the reason KJ was like, no, they're sending people to do this is because Swanson told her that, but that they never told James Charles to do anything. 
because James Charles didn't want his mom exposed as a source talking to KJ? What is happening? What in the name of beauty drama is paragraph 78? Oh my God. Oh. That is a lot. Let's finish the paragraph and we might have to dissect this one more time. Nevertheless, Swanson told KJ that Westbrook was involved behind the scenes of said request and used that information to sow distrust with KJ about the information she received from, we're presuming to be Charles, um, all in an effort to build an alliance. <laughs> There's an alliance! Do you want to build an alliance with me? Yes, I want to build an alliance with you. There's an alliance. No wonder KJ thinks everybody's doing stuff behind the scenes because that's been what was done to her. Most people aren't forming alliances on YouTube. Maybe they are, and I'm just not. I, okay. <laughs> All in an effort to build an alliance with Paulson to do his bidding and have KJ repost the damaging videos. In the end, KJ reposted the videos that she had recently deleted and continued to publish new content with devastating effect on the company. Oh my God. Paragraph 78 is just like, whoosh, all of it. I know that the channels who have all of the clips of all of these things happening will put together this timeline because this timeline is kind of thick and I don't have it at the top of my brain. But the company believes that West, James Westbrook told Swanson that Paulson removed negative videos about uh, Halo and Toddy after James Charles reached out to her and asked her to do so. And that James Charles reached out to her because he didn't want there to be a lawsuit. And we've seen the clips of her saying, there's a lawsuit coming, you don't want to be involved or whatever they said. Um, and that James Charles was doing that to protect his mom who was talking to KJ. But then Swanson end routed what was told to him by James Westbrook, went running back to KJ and said, by the way, the only reason Charles reached out to you, we're assuming social media personality. The only reason social media personality reached out to you is because James Westbrook told him to. And then she was like, no, fuck this. What you're not going to do is use somebody else to do your bidding to get me to take down shit about you. Fuck it. I'm putting it all back up. That's what I'm getting from paragraph 78. Oh my God, y'all. We'll talk about this in Q&A. Let's keep going. We've got to finish reading the lawsuit. We're not, even, we're not even done yet. That's like videos come down, videos go up. This is so messy. Swanson is running around just like diving into beauty YouTube drama. Just like, just into the beauty YouTube drama. Like we're just going to make it messy. Oh my God. All right. Paragraph 79. We're 19 pages in. Let's keep going. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for somebody to break down paragraph 78 with video clips. Thank you in advance. Tag me, share the videos. I can't wait to see them. The company is informed and believes that Swanson also revealed various aspects of the company's inner workings to KJ. Well, we've seen the videos where she's like, I have a source inside the company and I have a source inside the company who says that things aren't going well and that the partners are fighting and that the lawsuit's going to be filed soon into the thick of it, into the thick of it. Yeah, I missed the opportunity, Octo, thank you. I missed the opportunity to meme the backyardigans that I watched a lot of when my kids were little. Okay. The company's inner working to Paulson's, including who was allegedly responsible for which roles and jobs at the company, discussed product pipelines, finances, and falsely led her to believe that he had been the primary source of funding for the company and was losing substantial sums of money because of the Westbrooks. The company is informed and believed that Swanson falsely claimed that there were internal company agreements concerning Tati's requirements and quotas for social media postings related to the company. Are there videos about this? Um... I'll be curious to see, to further uh, integrate herself and to provoke KJ. Well, we know that she's very provocable. <laughs> People poke at her. Just We know that that happens. We've seen that happen. Swanson also revealed additional confidential information to KJ that the Westbrooks were going to file a lawsuit against her. <laughs> By the way, this is coming. Um, 
The company is informed and believes that in an effort to further harm Tati's reputation and the company generally, Swanson told KJ that Tati was extremely mentally ill and that as a result, James controlled who has access to Tati. That's an that's an oddly specific thing to say and an oddly specific thing to put in here. This is just all of it, all of all of it, all of it. Oh my goodness. I should have put my hair up for this. Like I, you know, we, we needed hair up. This is like, oh my God, there's so much. Okay. This is just, this is just a lot. <sighs> the company is informed and believes that Swanson's statements regarding Tati diminished the public image of the company just as he intended. Well, yeah, the, the, a lot of videos went out and then there was a lawsuit. I'm going to stop reading the company's informed and beliefs. Every single paragraph starts with it. We know these are allegations. We're just going to, we're just going to keep getting into it. Swanson also told KJ that he had done all of the work on the nutraceutical line, that Tati had little to no interest in the products and that Tati was in essence, only a figurehead in regard to the halo beauty brand. I'm sure there's videos that say that too. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see that there were videos saying things like this too, because I seem to remember that being said. The company is informed and believes that Swanson carefully weaved, <laughs> carefully weaved and concocted a false narrative to galvanize KJ to wage war on the Westbrooks through social media to harm the company. Well, who's spinning narratives? Who is spinning narratives? Swanson's apparently spinning narratives. Oh my goodness. Uh, the company's informed and believe that in much the same way, Swanson continually represented to the Westbrook that the Westbrooks used him for his expertise in the nutraceutical area and his money and asserted they had stopped working with the company. So Swanson is now just saying, oh, they've abandoned Halo. I'm doing everything. They're just using me for my brains and my money. Ugh. There is not enough coffee for this today. This is a this is a lot, this is a whole lot of information. The company is informed and believes in much the same way. Oh, we talked about that. Paragraph eighty four um, believes that Swanson made these representations to KJ in the hopes that she would repeat them publicly. Well, y yep, to diminish the Halo brand, which was being promoted as being intertwined with and recommended by Toddy. Well, yes. Halo is intertwined with Toddy. This in turn would damage the company by calling into question whether its main promoter actually supported or had any real involvement with the company's products. Well, yeah, it would make it seem like, oh, it's just another one of these influencers slapping their name on some shit that they don't care about. And then doubled down with that when, um, when the lawsuit came out and was like, say, made those allegations and accusations in his lawsuit in October. The company informed and believes that Swanson also continually criticized Toddy's promotion of the company's products, claiming to KJ that Toddy's actions and interactions were harming the brand. I wonder the timing of all of that. Um, they believe that Swanson communicated all of this to KJ with an intent to harm the company. The company believes that Swanson's malicious intent was for the information he was providing to KJ to be made publicly by a known antagonist of the company. Well, yeah. And then that happened. All of you are saying switch the lights to red. All right. There is, there's a lot of fuckery happening. I hear you. I hear you chat. I hear you. We're, we're moving on. I need to set up a, a voice memo on this so I can just tell the phone. I hear you all. There's a lot of DEF CON red going on. <laughs> there is, there is, this is just, this is motion granted for DEF CON red. This is high fuckery with regard to the behind the scenes seeming weaving of these stories. But the thing is, a lot of us watched this unfold when I didn't see any of this happen until the defamation lawsuit and then went back and looked at videos with an eye on the defamation suit going, here are the statements. But you guys, a lot of you have watched this unfold in real time, knowing the things that were said by KJ. And now we're learning the behind the scenes of why those things were said, where that information is coming from, with the added bonus of now knowing that this is stuff that KJ told the Westbrooks when they all sat down to settle the defamation case. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> where were we? Uh, 
During the duration of their communications over several months, KJ would only refer to him as her source, which gave credibility to the assertions she was making about the company and about Tati in her YouTube videos. I think everybody has seen those YouTube videos saying, well, my source is saying there's this going on in the company and my source is saying that. Um, the company is informed and believes that the Westbrooks and Swanson's relationship continued to deteriorate. Swanson told KJ he was planning to file a lawsuit against the Westbrooks in California. Well, we knew that that... <laughs> Yep. In this regard, the company is informed and believes that Swanson told Paulson that he would let her know in advance of the lawsuit being filed so that she could break the story. Not, not more with breaking the story. It was in the <laughs> KJ's motion to dismiss probably said it seven times that she broke the story. Um, and to promote the salacious and unnecessary allegations after about the Westbrooks that he intended to put into the lawsuit to put therein. The company believes that moments after he filed the California lawsuit, he utilized software to transmit a disappearing e What's with the disappearing emails? The wh what? He utilized software to transmit a disappearing email to Paulson using the alias Bruce Bristol. Well, that's oddly specific. And I imagine that's included in here for, this is my sup. This is lawyer Emily's supposition that that oddly specific detail is in here because if this detail is true, then this is the Westbrook saying to Swanson through this lawsuit, "Yeah, we know what the fuck you did last summer. We know all of what the fuck you did last summer, and here's how we know, Bruce. This is how we know because KJ told us in our settlement agreement. That's that that." I think that that's why this is in here because it, it, if this is true, this lets Clark know that they know everything we know. We know what the fuck you did last summer, um, which is kind of brilliant, right? The company moments after he filed the lawsuit in California, he utilized software to transmit a disappearing email to Paulson using Bruce Bristol, notifying her that it was, it's done and asking her to promote it. Plaintiff is informed and believes that Paulson did Swanson's bidding and broke the story. It became worldwide news with tens of thousands of articles, videos, and social media mentions. We talked about this. We talked about that. Um, the company believes that Paulson, KJ, ultimately discontinued communication with Swanson. Swanson stopped giving her information. Instead of continuing to communicate with KJ, Swanson began reaching out to other YouTube creators. And we've seen videos about that via telephone, email, or other private means. Yeah, like DMs. Um, with whom he could share company confidential information, causing further harm to the company. Fred, you can't just come in and not say hi to the law nerds. Fred's like, yes, I can. Yes, I can. The company is informed and believes that Swanson made these statements in violation of the confidentiality agreement. This is this is interesting stuff. I wonder what the uh, I wonder what the moment was the moment of the, we're not talking anymore. So many questions. The company is damaged as a result of Swanson's actions. Well, the company, well, I guess the Paulsons had to, or the, the Westbrooks had to spend the money on the other suit, but they're still fighting out this suit. I'll stop supposing and we'll just keep reading. The company is informed to believe that Swanson's repeated communications with KJ and other YouTube creators and internet bloggers materially damaged the company. The company believes that Swanson interfered with the lawsuit against KJ to conceal his actions. Uh, I wonder why. I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> I wonder why Swanson was trying to get the company to not pay for the lawsuit, hoping that the Westbrooks wouldn't want to spend the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it can cost to bring a lawsuit like this. Maybe hoping that they would just be like, fuck it, it's too much money. Oh my goodness. I mean, the things, the things that KJ is alleged to have said in the suit that has settled and the things that are going on now, they are saying damage the company. And if they damage the company, then it's completely proper for the company to pay for the lawsuit. It just seems from this pure Emily speculation that Swanson was trying to block the company paying for it in hopes that the Westerks would just be like, it's too much money, fuck it. And they didn't. They were like... We ride. <laughs> and that's where we're at now. We're at we ride. Like this is this is we ride times 28 pages. 
He refused to allow the company to pay its attorneys, who were the same attorneys he had approved of sending four separate cease and desist letters. I mean, the shade. The just Can you imagine how frustrating this would be when you find out all of this, that the hundreds of thousands of dollars that were likely spent in that lawsuit, my speculation, the hun- not just the spending of all of the cease and desist, but then all of the litigation, all of the litigation that went down with the defamation suit, there were so many filings. And were there so many filings because behind the scenes, Swanson was like, they're going to run out of money. They're not going to do it. The company's not paying for it. Is it because KJ had more information behind the scenes from Swanson, who was trying to damage the Westbrooks on that front so he could go after the business lawsuit on this front? Fighting a two-front war is way harder. <gasps> Yikes. Yikes. All of these fees were incurred because of his wrongful conduct. Yeah. So much money. The company is informed and believes that due to Swanson's actions, including the disparagement of the company and disclosure of non-public confidential information, the company's reputation was materially damaged. And Tati was the face, as Tati was the face of the company, Swanson's speculation about Tati's mental health, participation in developing and advertising the brand, and Tati's knowledge of the industry diminished the company's reputation, including public perception of the efficacy effectiveness of its products. These disparaging statements caused the company a loss of sales and caused a general decline of business for the company. The company's informed and belief Swanson's actions created a hostile environment on social media and undermined Tati's efforts to return to YouTube and promote the business. We really did hear her talk about that in her video returning about these things behind the scenes. The company's informed and believes that Swanson failed to provide formulas or the supplemental product pipeline to protect the intellectual property of the company, neglecting to partner in the approved clinical trials at UCLA. I mean, when you've participated in clinical trials, it's absolutely going to boost any company. The company is informed and believes that Swanson's intentional misconduct has damaged both the marketing power, value of the brand, intellectual property, and further jeopardized the legitimacy of a filed patent that supports the efficacy of the formula. The company believes Swanson's actions included financial harm to the company by his repeated failures as his duty as CFO, including but not limited to, oh, the CFO failures are listed out in number points. All right. Failure to maintain the com- oh, oh, that's not a good one. Failure to maintain the company's set of corporate books and to provide quarterly and annual reporting for the previous three years. These are allegations. It's a lawsuit. Failure to maintain health insurance benefits for employees, canceling coverage around May 2020. What? <laughs> canceling in the middle of a panorama ding dong, the the insurance is getting canceled without approval from the Westbrooks or notification to employees. Can you imagine being an employee? Yikes. Failure to maintain the company's accounts payable that resulted in delinquent payments to key vendors and lost in manufacturing credit faci- loss of manufacturing credit facility. Failure to provide the company's 2020 schedule K1s and corporate tax returns to members. That's a big pro. Like these are like, I know all of us are like, but the T, but these are like also very big problems. Like the end routing to another YouTuber to talk shit and leak corporate documents is so fucking shady. But all of this is also very bigly problematic. Like big, 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 big problems. Big problems. Big problems. Um, also, the things alleged here, there these are not like, oh, so-and-so said this to so-and-so. These are things that either either happened or they didn't. They either happened or they didn't. These are things that will be, they, they either happened or they didn't. Um, failure to collect, report, and remit the company's sales tax receipts outside of California, resulting in a liability to the company in excess of $500,000. That is a liability. That's not that they necessarily incurred that, but that's a lot of liability. July 8th, 2021, Swanson. Oh, whoop, there it is. That was what? Two days ago, July 8th, 2021, Swanson was removed as CFO by written consent of the majority members of the company. Yeah, Toddy and James. They were like, nope, we're done. So (laughs) Swanson got fired as this got filed because this got filed yesterday. This got filed. uh Uh-oh, I'm going to scroll too fast. I apologize. This got filed yesterday. So they removed him the day before this got filed. This was filed yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon. 
Yikes. All right. Sorry. I'm scrolling. I'm going to get back to the causes of action. We haven't even gotten to the causes of action yet. We've just gotten to all the, the allegations in this suit and all of the information that um, is going to line up with, I imagine, the information that they got from KJ and their settlement agreement and the records that they have. So Swanson was removed as CFO literally two days ago. Claim of relief, breach of contract against Swanson and Swanson's holding company. The Westbrooks and Swanson in their capacities as representatives of the members of the company, as well as their capacities of officers of the company, entered into a confidentiality agreement. The agreement was a condition of Swanson's and the Westbrook status of officers of the company. They intended the confidentiality agreement to be for the benefit of the company. They relied on the agreement in continuing to disclose confidential information to Swanson. Well, of course they had to disclose confidential information. He's the CFO, but the, the, the inner workings of stuff, they didn't necessarily have to disclose because they could outvote him on those things. Um, the purpose of the confidentiality agreement was to protect the company from a com uh, from the confusion and damage that would occur if the internal affairs were to close, disclose, like literally all companies everywhere. The importance of the confidentiality agreement cannot be understated as a large portion of the marketing of Halo Beauty products was accomplished through Tati's YouTube channel and social media. Swanson understood his conduct could diminish the marketing of Halo products, which in turn could damage the company. I mean, it just... I don't, under, you're, you're making money off this company that's making money. Damaging the company is just such a scorched earth thing to do. Swanson breached the confidentiality agreement by disclosing confidential information to KJ and other YouTube creators and media sources. As a direct and proximate result of Swanson's behavior, the company has been damaged well in excess of $15,000. I mean, I imagine the, cause the legal fees would fall into that too, in some regard. Um, Moreover, without court intervention, Swanson will likely continue to breach the agreement, exacerbating the harm that they have caused, which is irreparable and cannot be fully remedied by monetary relief. They're asking the court to issue a permanent injunction prohibiting him from taking any action that disparages the company. Keep our name out of your mouth. Second claim for relief, breach of implied contractual covenant of good faith and fair dealing against Swanson. We talked about this when we talked about Ursula. <laughs> If you didn't see that video, you're like, how are we talking about the Little Mermaid? We talked about the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. It's like you, you, it's a duty that is owed. In every contract, including the confidentiality agreement, each party thereto makes an implied covenant of good faith and fair dealing. You're not going to try to undermine the other party. <clears throat> Though his actions complained of herein, Swanson breached said covenant of good faith and fair dealing, breached the implied covenant by intentionally misrepresenting his abilities, intentionally failing to pay vendors, um, failing to properly manage the collection of sales taxes, maintaining the books. Those wrongful acts caused or will cause the company to incur significant expense and losses. Furthermore, the acts of disparagement and disclosure of confidential information, even if they had not been governed by the confidentiality agreement, would be a breach of the implied covenant of fair faith and good faith and fair dealing because such acts are repugnant to the interests of the company and unfaithful to his obligations as an officer. So even if, even if it's not a breach of the confidentiality agreement, it's a breach of his duty as an officer of the company upon information and belief, the foregoing actions <clears throat> and inactions were undertaken in bad faith and denied the company. It's justified expectations, um, monetary amount, uh, asking for a permanent injunction. Third claim for relief. Oh, my throat. Apologies. Breach of implied contractual covenant of good faith and fair dealing against the holding company. So not Swanson as an individual, but the other company. Um, members of member-managed member LLCs owe at a minimum of implied contractual covenant of good faith and fair dealing to the members of the company. As a result, SGE, as a member of the company, owed a duty of good faith and fair dealing. The implied contractual covenant of good faith forbids arbitrary action by one party that disadvantages the other. By and through Swanson, the company's acts of disparagement and disclosure of confidential information. So this is another cause of action tying back to Swanson relating that confidential information as they are alleging here. Fourth claim, uh, intentional interference with contractual relations against both the tortious interference with contractual uh, relations are when he um, 
when there is a valid and existing contract, defendant has knowledge, defendant commits intentional acts intended or designed to disrupt the contract, there is an actual disruption. It results in damage. Swanson was aware of the company's agreements with vendors, including favorable payment terms. Swanson acted intentionally to disrupt those relationships for their financial benefit. By way of example, but not limitation, say it with me, just, just the tip. Swanson and SGE were aware that the company had earned favorable payment terms with FLP, the company's largest vendor, such that the company was required to put no money down upon an order and only required to pay within 30 days after delivery. A zero down net 30 is a really good term on a physical product. Otherwise, you have to come up with like, oh, we will go ahead and manufacture it. You need to put up the money first, then we'll manufacture, then you sell and recoup the money. So that is a very favorable contract term that allows you to move faster in business, I would imagine, especially with a physical product, because you don't have to amass the money, put it down, and then manufacture. In December 2020, as per the company's regular practice, Swanson was instructed to pay all open invoices and purchase orders in full before he made recommendations about the distributions. Swanson had not actually made all the payments. It, several invoices, including FLP's invoice, were paid substantially late, far exceeding agreed credit terms by the company. FLP withdrew the favorable terms and now requires the company to pay a 50% deposit at the time of order, which definitely slows you down. And then they get into the amount for jurisdiction that they are entitled to punitive damages as regard to this claim. Those are the punishment ones. Those are the like, no punitive damages. Um, and be determined by jury because Swanson's act described herein were intentional, oppressive, fraudulent, or malicious. Prayer for relief, everything we said above, signed, whoop, there it is, 28 pages, two hours of conversation, a lot, a lot of information. I have questions. You have questions. Y'all have been amazing. We've had almost 5,000 of you in here the whole time. So let's swoop to real quick questions and, and get into this because I'm sure you have them. I have them. This is a lot. I'm sure we'll talk about this Tuesday as well. I have streamed so much this week that my voice is actually a little hoarse. I'm going to get to super chats as you're getting into questions. Thank you all for being able to talk about the legal side of stuff without talking about like the personality side of stuff and, and keeping, keeping it classy and keeping it moving. I appreciate you law nerds. We're here to parse the facts. There's a lot of fuckery in this. Like what? So much. Um, don't forget to like, and subscribe. Cause if some of you aren't subscribed, then this will bing. We're very, very close to it. Binging. If it hasn't binged on the front end already, which it might've, I'm going to go, um, pull the super chats. Um, Shiana, Shia, I hope I, I hope I pronounce that right. Shania. That explained a lot of the weird KJ stuff. Oh, it explains a lot. It explains a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. All the make it make sense. I think we now know. I think we now know what is going on or what was going on during this time. It's so, so wild. <clears throat> Question, why couldn't Toddy and James overrule Swanson and pay for the lawsuit? Um, I'm going to have to think about it. It might be in their operating agreement that it needed that some expenditures of certain amount of money needed a unanimous approval. So that might be within the companies that might be also within that's a Nevada company within Nevada regulations. So I will look at it and talk about that on Tuesday because I didn't even look into that. But I am curious about that as well. Can they boot Swanson out of the partnership? It's going to depend on what their terms are. They've fired him. He still has an ownership interest. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that unwinds. What I would imagine, well, it depends. We know, we now, it now seems that Swanson is kind of dug in on this, but with all this information, with the information we know from other documents, because this isn't everything, right? We've seen in the pre litigation documents that there's more information here. And I imagine that isn't everything either. This is literally the tip of the iceberg with the information they have. Everything's not in here. There's enough in here to say this is why this case should go forward and not get dismissed and all that. But there is a lot um, of information that I'm sure is not in this. And the lawyers will have to go behind the scenes and talk about it. I wonder if the settlement will end up just being a walk away from all the lawsuits and buying out Swanson's interest, being like, look, keep our name out of your mouth. First, drop your lawsuit. Second, we'll drop our lawsuit. Third, and we will buy out your interest. Goodbye. 
never to be seen from again. I, you know, it seemed like the smart thing to do would be to resolve these lawsuits and get him out of the company, but maybe they'll keep going through the injunctions and get the court to heat him out of the company and spend, I mean, all of the lawyer's fees. Halo's going to be paying for this one. So his, I would think Swanson's interest would be in reducing the amount that Halo is spending on this so that they can all resolve it. But one never knows. When Tati launched Halo and uploaded a video on questions, accusations, et cetera, hair, skin, and nails, and she praised Clark for his expertise, how the tides have turned. I feel awful for Tati and James. This shit's really stressful to go to. Um, SL Brennan, if this went to court, could KJ testify on behalf of Tati? KJ would be a witness in this for sure. She has the information about the dealings of Clark Swanson. I imagine that she's already given a sworn statement to the Westbrooks as part of the settlement from the defamation case, which yes, this now puts KJ saying, no, this is what was said by him because now she becomes a witness in this lawsuit. So yes. Um, do you think the Westbrooks suspected Swanson when he refused to let Halo pay for the defamation lawsuit? Maybe, but it could have been before then too um, because the information I imagine, look, when you know things, you know things, right? So I imagine the, the Westbrooks were seeing the things that KJ was saying, going the only way someone would know this is from someone inside the company. The only way someone would know this. And so I imagine the suspicion started with those videos. My pure speculation on my part. Or, or we know that James Charles reached out to KJ to say, please take this stuff down. James Charles might have known pure speculation, at least a little bit from conversation. I believe KJ posted those. So I don't know if he knew and told them too, but I imagine the statements in the videos about these companies are fighting and I have this source um, would have been a big red flag for the Westbrooks. Could Clark go to jail for this? This is all corporate dealings. This is all civil stuff. This is money stuff. I haven't seen anything that would indicate to me this is criminal stuff. It doesn't mean there isn't more information. Right now, this is all uh, shitty corporate stuff that shouldn't have ever happened. Question, what could Swanson possibly gain from all the behind the scenes undermining of the company? I think he was mad. I think he was mad. I don't, I don't know if he, th I don't know. What did the lawsuit say? The lawsuit, hold on, let's, let me pull it up real quick. The lawsuit said overblown sense of entitlement. So maybe his overblown sense of entitlement was bruised when they weren't giving him what he perceived that he was entitled to with the 50% of Tati's beauty launch with the face launch. I wonder what the timing is between Tati launching Tati beauty and him starting to do this kind of stuff. Um, and believing he was entitled to part of that company. And then just getting fucking pissed. Sometimes people do things against their interest, especially if he's founding other companies that are doing well. It's like, fuck it. If I burn this to the ground, it burns them to the ground too. We all, you know, if I burn, you burn with us, that kind of things. Or if we burn, if we burn, you burn with us, Hunger Games. But it's that. If he's got other companies on the side that he's putting his energy to, he can burn this to the ground to spite the Westbrooks with, yes, financial damage to him, but he's also got other things on the side. What Tati has on the side is her YouTube channel and this. So if you burn her reputation down, it takes all of it down for them, but not necessarily for him. So spite, spite, spite is powerful. Hi from Brazil. First time here. Um, why did they take to, so long to remove him as CFO? I don't know. Um, I wonder how long it took them to, I mean, this is a month from when it's the, when KJ announced the settlement of this stuff. So a month is not that long. Why didn't they remove him before? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me go back. Thank you guys for the super chats. I'm going to go back and get the ones I missed. Um, why wasn't he removed when he asked for funds back? I don't know why they choose. I don't know. That was their choice to leave him as part of this company. It might have been because they needed the formulas. From everyone I know um, that has used Halo, they like the formulas. And so there was a benefit to the Westbrooks having those formulas. I'm sure they found somebody else, but you know, um, this is why this is wild. This is just wild. That, you know, normally when there's a uh by the way, there's a Gerard Cosmetics sale. If you guys want the stuff, there is the stuff. Um, normally when there's a settlement and you can kind of see what's happening because you can, 
when you've done enough of these, you can kind of look and go, it seems like there might be this and this here, but it's kind of fuzzy and it's a speculation and you don't know. It's really interesting to then get it all spelled out in another lawsuit. And you're like, oh, that's what we've been, that's what we've been supposing. There it is in writing. That was, that kind of lines up with our supposition. These allegations line up with our own kind of gut supposition on some of this stuff. I need to pull up super chats before I scrolling it. Um, get distracted. And I know you guys want to ask about Britney stuff. Again, I forgot to say, do the likey and subscribey things, do those. I know we want to talk about Britney stuff. I know that it looks like she is getting to hire her own attorney. That's all going to have to go through the court. So let's try We're going to focus on this. If those documents come up, I will do them on a reel on Instagram, or we'll talk about them on Tuesday because um, that's interesting stuff too, but that's all going to have to go to the court on the 14th. So everything that happens from Brittany now, between now and the 14th, the court is going to say, put it on the 14th. Just please just put it on the 14th. We're not doing anything till the 14th. So even if she wants to hire her own attorney has reached out to attorneys, that all still has to be approved by the court. So it's not, it's not done yet. It's not done yet. All right, super chats that I missed. Thank you all for them. I appreciate it. Brandy Rose said, on vacation and celebrating a beautiful Saturday in Maine. Day drinking, down east, hard cider. Yay for a Saturday live. Well, congratulations. Day drinking is glorious. When I am done recording, um, I have, A, there's an, there's an MMA fight tonight. There's some UFC that doesn't involve a Paul brother. And I'm very excited about that. And I've got some salted watermelon whiskey that is waiting for me. Oh, shit. I forgot to make new whiskey ice cubes. Damn it. I'm going to have to make new whiskey cubes. I forgot to make new whiskey ice cubes. Damn, that's what we're doing after this live. I got to make whiskey ice cubes. That that has to happen. Um, I'm doing, let's see, Jennifer H. I'm doing Reno's listening to your Without a Crystal Ball and Britney playlist and learning all of the law things. Thank you for making me smarter. Hi from London. You're welcome. I mean, the problem is, is that now when you see legal things like by way of example, not exclusion, all of you are going to be in your head going, just the tip. <laughs> but what you can't say in court, what you can't say in court is just the tip. Um, Catherine said, hello from rainy Florida, have been watching for a long time as replay crew member, but finally caught alive. Absolutely love your content. It seems like this time actually works well for y'all, which is really nice. We'll have to consider adding, sprinkling a few in. Kayla Kennedy said, now we're going in with the red lipstick. Speaking of lipstick, <laughs> this was when we were talking about the ED. Now we're going in with the red lipstick. Speaking of lipstick, are you having ED issues? James doesn't, but you might try our new ED supplement. <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Kayla. <laughs> Eugene, thank you for the super sticker banana. Uh, Katie said, thank you for doing this. I cannot stop laughing. Much needed laughter this weekend. I mean, again, lawsuits are stressful, but this is corporate shade. These are, this is a YouTuber that we quite like. This is, this is literally book two on the story we've been following since October. It is so wild. Octonation, good to see you. Thank you for the super sticker. Tabby said, KJ must have um, sung like a pet store full of canaries. I mean, yes, yes, yes. But Clark shouldn't have been doing any of this shit. So, I mean, I don't know why Clark thinks he was going to get loyalty from uh, somebody protecting him. I don't know what, what we were thinking. Rena said, all right, guys, who would win in a fight, Bruce Bristol or Vivian St. Clair? <laughs> Jennifer H. said, question, why wasn't Swanson fined, uh, fired when he wanted the investment back? We got to that one. Um, and also, where was his NDA? I don't know. They talk about the confidentiality agreement. I don't know if that's within the corporate documents. I'm sure if there was an NDA, they would have talked about it. Um, Kira M said when Tati launched Halo and uploaded, we did that. We talked about jail. Hello from Brazil. Jilly, thank you for the super sticker. Jennifer H, why wasn't he removed when he asked for the funds back? Yep. And I don't know that some of the decisions we're not going to be able to parse. Um, we don't know. Thanks mods for the extra ride. You are welcome. It's, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the mods. They make it possible to do this. Um, it's like the wild west of Clark Swanson entitlement. I mean... I mean, it's all coming around. Let me take a look real quick. Um, this We'll see this pop off. I mean, it's going to be a little bit before they have to respond. When there is a response, I'll cover it. Um, shits and giggles. Could Swanson sue KJ? I mean, 
first, anyone can sue anyone for anything. But in this, KJ telling the Westbrooks what Swanson told her, she doesn't owe him a duty of loyalty. She doesn't owe him a duty of confidentiality. Um, she doesn't really owe him anything. He owes the company duties because he's a, you know, member of the company and has an agreement with the Westbrooks to not undermine the company. But if the things that she shared with the Westbrooks are true, then there is nothing that's a problem there. She's allowed to turn around and go, here's the emails. Like, leave me the fuck out of this. I mean, I would have done that during the cease and desists. But I can also understand that if Swanson's behind the scenes going, I'm not going to approve the suit and they're not going to have money and doing this stuff, why the confidence would be there to say they're never going to sue me. Like it all makes a little bit more sense to what we've seen play out because a lot of us were sitting here going after the second cease and desist, maybe you go, you know what, financially, this is not in my best interest. So I'm, I'm out. I am out. We out. But I think this gives a lot more context to everything that was going on. Um, I'm going to look real quick because there were no new filings in the Britney case, though TMZ kept saying there was, and I just want to look real quick before we, before we wrap up. Um, no, and I don't see anything new. So TMZ is reporting stuff that I haven't seen. I wonder if what TMZ is reporting is stuff that has been delivered to the law firm, not stuff that's been filed in court. Um, yes, Saltsy is on this case as well, uh, along with local counsel in Nevada. So yes, there's almost 5,000 of us here. Yes, go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe. Oh, I didn't even check. I think we're going to, oh, we're very close to 142, but I don't know if we're going to bing. If you guys don't hit the likey, subscribey things, then we're not. I know you guys are saying, hey to Fred, hey to George. Did George walk in? Oh, there he is. Hey, George. I know. He's like, yeah, I'm here. What? That's George in the chair. I don't know where Fred went. Um... Karen said Swanson chose KJ because he saw all that. Well, they said in this lawsuit, there were 50 videos up before there was any contact between Swanson and KJ. So yeah, it makes sense. You would, you would pick, you know, you, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You would pick someone who already is talking about this. Um, he saw the hate videos KJ was spitting out about the Westbrooks. Um, he, KJ did want to be the first to report it. And I think, I think she definitely went, well, I've got a source, I'm protected. And it aligned with what she already seemed to believe or feel. Um, question, do you think Swanson pay? I don't know. I don't know if it was just, in, I don't know. It's not alluded to in here. I think if there was payment, that will come up at some point because that goes like another step further in all of this. Um, I'm sure that'll come up if that if that scenario exists. Could Toddy and James recoup any of the personal funds they used out of the lawsuit out of company funds? It would have to be approved through the company and they would have to do that. Um, but it is a possibility, particularly if Swanson gets bounced out of the company. I imagine the company is going to want to focus on this lawsuit first before worrying about that. That would be my guess. But we'll see. Um, question, if the allegation is true, could this become criminal? I answered that a bit earlier. I... There would, I would need more information to say that right now, this is a lot of appropriate civil litigation. This is, you know, corporate misdealing from a member of the company, belying the trust of the company and then suing people and then taking out this like hate campaign online and, you know, breaching their duties and stuff. So my, oh my, my, oh my, my, oh my. It's a lot of stuff. Um, question, could Swanson have had contact with Brown um, to backstab Saltsy and the Westbrooks and complicate the lawsuit and impede its resolution? It, any, I mean, I think what we've seen is anything is possible. We don't have any evidence of that, but anything is possible. The amount of filings in that lawsuit definitely um, exploded quickly, very, very quickly. So, you know, it is, it is, it is. I am Justin Glenn said, I still want to know who paid her legal fees. And we might not know. And we might not know. Um, it might have been her. And if it was, that that I imagine would have been uh, a substantial hit personally to pay the amount of legal fees. So Because it it's not an insubstantial case. That defamation case had a lot of legal work that went into it. Question, blue hair for when you reach 200K. I think about it because I can feel that for you. 
We'll talk about it. I, we have galaxy hair. At, I think we talked about galaxy hair at 250. I'm going to add some more pink in it probably at 150. There's a little pink under here. I love the purple. We'll keep playing with it for sure. I mean, and if it's down, I'm going to keep doing this because I, I'm a child and I can't help myself. <laughs> A uh, question. I'm so confused why Swanson would even do this. There doesn't seem to be any benefit to him, even if he did get away with it. Uh, spite is powerful. And this is my speculation. Uh, they call it in the lawsuit an over, over um, overblown sense of entitlement or, or the similar. But if, if Swanson was already upset that he felt he deserved some of Tati beauty. And it was clear that wasn't working. And there were things not going well with this relationship behind the scenes. It really might have been a scorched earth, mutually assured destruction kind of a thing, because it doesn't benefit him to damage the company he's benefiting from. But if he's spending money on other companies, and if you research him online, there are other companies, there are crypto companies and other companies that he's founded then he has something else to fall back on. And he might have perceived that the Westbrooks don't because for the last year, until very, very recently, Toddy was offline completely after Buy Sister. And then Swanson's putting out this hit campaign on her company when she can't respond because she is offline. And then you've got a, a company that I am guessing is disrupted by supply chain like everyone else was during the, the panorama and all of that. So this, this was kind of like a, 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 I don't know, perfect storm of circumstances if he wanted to try to take them down personally out of some type of a personal vendetta. Because company-wise, the company was very successful. Everybody would have been making quite a bit of money on these distributions. We talked about that in other filings, the millions that were being distributed to the owners. Um, so financially why, but also people don't always make decisions just based on money. Uh, personal feelings can come into things for sure. Uh, it's just a um, mother oats question. Could Swanson claim disability as an excuse since they say he had addiction issues that the one third agreement he signed wasn't valid. Um, well, we'll see what Swanson says when he responds to this. Uh, it would be very hard to say that he signed that under duress because then he continued to perform the contract. Well, perform their alleging badly, but he continued to perform under that agreement. He didn't just walk. So it would be, it would be an interesting argument to make, but I don't know. Um, and I don't know how long that went on for because it doesn't seem to, it hasn't come up in any of this. Um, so, Question, if you had to defend the indefensible, what would Swanson's defense be? Oh, somebody's watching me over on vidIQ's channel on defend the indefensible. Um, defend the indefensible <sighs> would be, this didn't really hurt the company. That channel doesn't have that many views anyway. Everyone knew that it wasn't statements of fact, that it was just personal opinion. So you're allowed to state your opinion. You know, these things are opinion. Um, I didn't owe this duty to the company. That's not what the confidentiality agreement meant to me. Um, what else? It was the pandemic and by sister to blame for all of this. I had nothing to do with it. That would be the defend the indefensible. I think on that um, question, why didn't they just counter sue? Wouldn't that have been easier or is there a benefit to filing a separate case in the other case? You've got an interesting, I'm going to pull it up. You've got some interesting quirks in the other case because you also have Clark suing on behalf of Halo. So you've got this derivative suit on behalf of Halo, the California Corporation, though the California Corporation seems to just be the holding corporation. This lawsuit is being filed on, oh, that's the wrong one. This lawsuit is being filed for the Nevada Corporation. So the Nevada Corporation is not one of the defendants here, I don't think. Let's see. Oh, no, there it is. So the Nevada Corporation is both a plaintiff and a defendant here already as a derivative suit. I think it's cleaner to file it separately. Also, filing it separately lets them just be where they want to be in this lawsuit. In this lawsuit, there's already motions to move venue uh, and to move this lawsuit into Nevada. And we've seen that and we've covered that. So this just puts the lawsuit where they think this lawsuit should be anyway. Um, could it also be more expensive 
for Swanson to potentially have to defend on two fronts the way the Westbrooks had to defend on two fronts with the defamation suit and the suit, possibly. There would be some strategy to that. Um, it might also keep it um, keep it cleaner because of this being a derivative suit, but I already said that. So those are my initial thoughts on that. But with this just coming up, you know, yesterday, I will think more on it and probably have more thoughts on that for Tuesday. Don't you, don't you leave the chair, leave the chair. What are we doing? Fred, don't kick George out. Rude, rude. The pawners are, Fred just kicked George right out of his seat. And George is like, yeah, it's fine. George is so mellow. George is so mellow. Angel said, question, will the oral confidentiality agreement be valid if there's no way to prove it was established. Also, it seems Tani's dumping everything on Swanson and then complained what he couldn't do at all. Um, well, it seems from my, A, I can see where that is, but B, Swanson said, I want 50%. I'm going to do it all. And then they changed that. Um, he said, I can do all of this. And they said, okay, well, for half the company, do all of this. And then they're alleging in this that they narrowed it down because he wasn't doing all of that. And so then operations also had to go to James and that's why they switched it to a third. Um, uh, oral confidentiality agreements. So Nevada is going to allow different types of oral agreements to be enforced and that's going to have to be proven up by evidence. So whether there are additional agreements, they made it very clear in this suit that there was this oral agreement. If there was a written agreement, I'm sure that would have been in here too. So, um, question would Swanson have been able to erase any personal debt or reap any rewards for forcing Halo into bankruptcy? I haven't really thought about that because he was already, he already recouped his investment. So I can't like my initial reaction is I can't see a benefit. I will think on it more, but he already recouped his initial investment. So I don't know, unless he's trying to, it, I don't know if flavor core is trying to compete in this same industry with halo. And if it's flavor core knocking out a competitor, that's pure speculation. I don't know what type of products they're trying to develop. Um, but I don't know, which is why I've defaulted to what it said in this lawsuit, this it, sense of entitlement that he also said in his lawsuit, Swanson in the business partner suit said he wanted 50% of Toddy Beauty. He didn't get 50% of Toddy Beauty. That seems to have pissed him off. And then it seems like mutually assured destruction. So that's, that's, that's kind of my initial take on this. Thanks for the fantastically delicious surprise live. I've missed lives being back in the office. Love the law nerds. I know we might have to consider doing some weekend lives now that uh, everybody's not working ho from home with COVID. It might have to be a thing. Sorry, my nose is starting to itch. I apologize. So let's see. I'm, I saw a few more come up. Um, question. Am I still blocked by KJ? I have no idea. I do not check for her possibly. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, but I, I don't, I don't really look at what she's up to. Um, covering the Duggars, I'm sure. Statement. You should do purple roots, red ends. That's what I'm doing next. That, I mean, I've considered rainbow and oil slick and more pink because there is pink under here and galaxy will definitely keep it fun. Um, could Swanson say he was protecting the brand by getting KJ to stop calling it snake oil? I mean, he could try, but then all those videos would come up again and it's like, well, it, okay. Did it really shift? And did, did it really shift? And did she stop going after Toddy and James? Because going after Toddy is going after the face of the brand, which also damages the brand, which is alleged here. So I don't know. I mean, It'll be interesting to see. I'm sure that the Westbrooks at this point have a lot of physical evidence with regard to those communications that KJ would have given to them as part of this settlement and part of a sworn statement, which I imagine exists because they put so much detailed information in this complaint that they would need to be able to back up the source of that information, which now puts us from Tati suing KJ to KJ being a witness in Tati suing her business partner, which is just the internet. Isn't that the internet for you? <laughs> Question, Emily, who would you want to play you in movies? I don't know because this mess will be filmed. I mean, it hasn't stopped. Um, 
I have no idea. I've never really thought about it. I don't know. <laughs> somebody, somebody better than me at doing things. <laughs> A uh, question, if they did counterclaim, would that undermine their motion to dismiss on jurisdiction? It, it could, I think it could be seen as acquiescing to jurisdiction, but also I think most attorneys would want to wait until jurisdiction settled to file the counterclaim. And this is timely now. And this is close in time to when that settlement happened. Um, and it seems that they also terminated Swanson in connection with filing this. And that might have been a consideration that it's like, look, we don't want to wait till jurisdictions resolved. We just want to do this now. We need to do this now to protect the company. Um, Toddy's back online. She has a reputation to protect. You can't come back online and then worry that your business partner is now going to find someone other than um, KJ to go around and be like, well, I know Toddy's back, but do you want to hear some tea? Because it seems like it's a ripe situation to try to attack her again, right? Um, Ashley Vincent, thank you so much. That's very, very sweet. Um, so Eugene, thank you for that question about the the counterclaim. I think it's a, a very, very well articulated point, and I appreciate it. So yeah, yeah, cat bath time. Bath time. Oh, I think I think um, George is now sitting on Fred back here. They're just like whatever. Thank you, Diva. Um, so let's see what else. I know that there are storms coming in, uh, to the Southeast. So all of you down that way, buckle up. At least we streamed before anybody loses power, stay safe and all of that. Cause I know that that's coming in. Um, question, what could James Charles's mom have to test testify from shits and giggles? I, I, that I think that information is in there to show how much Swanson was using the information he was being given to then manipulate the narrative that was coming out online. I don't know if that absolutely needs to, um, needs to be flushed out at trial. It's one of the examples of, look, in this situation, damaging videos came down. Swanson said some shit, damaging videos went back up. That shows that he's trying to damage the company. The why of it all, we love, but the why of it all is not really super readily relevant yet because KJ, at some point, if she ever had to testify, would be able to testify to those things saying, these are the interactions and this is my own action. This is what Swanson said to me. Why Swanson said it to her is not super relevant from her perspective. It's like, I was told this and I responded this way. I think it just gives all of us context and it gives context to the amount of confidential information that was being used to manipulate a narrative online and to really run a narrative online against the Westbrooks and against Halo. <laughs> I, I said that. Um, who is, it's like, we're getting into this with the Bruce stuff. Who is hunky dory? Did y'all watch housewives this week? Um, Oh, we taught, I answered that one. Um, question. Have you heard that Britney Spears hired a new lawyer to replace Ingham Crispy? I have heard that TMZ is reporting that Britney is trying to hire her own lawyer. That all will have to be approved by the court on the 14th. No one will be hired yet. So no one will be hired yet. It's going to have to go through court process and we will see. Nothing has been filed in court. I imagine that Brittany is probably behind the scenes reaching out to lawyers to try to get somebody to come to court on the 14th. There's a motion from her mom to allow her to hire private counsel. There's a motion from Jody Montgomery to allow a guardian ad litem to help her hire. And there's an objection from her dad saying we need more briefing on this issue. So it's not going to be as easy as Brittany, who cannot at this point enter legally into a contract. The court's going to have to approve this. But I am glad that she is reaching out to counsel who might be able to come to court on the 14th and be like, hi, she would like to hire us. She is here in court. Let's facilitate this happening. That I'm happy to see. All right. Ashley said, add teal and do peacock hair. I mean, we might, we might at all. Um, so this is, oh my God, it's been like almost two and a half hours, y'all. As I'm like, oh, we can read this in an hour. Nope. Question, will you cover the Windsor VA lawsuit with the, I have no idea what that is, Aubrey. Um, I, I don't know. If I get tagged a bunch on it, maybe never say never. There are like four things in the hopper for Tuesday. And I still have a deep dive to do on Jen Shaw. And, and there's now another social media lawsuit with regard to Shannon Bedore suing like Instagram and, and Facebook and shit. There's so much happening. 
Do you think these lawsuits would have gained as much traction if drama get had never happened? No, I don't. I think um, there would be interest in the Tati business partner one. And I think that it was filed in a way to make it salacious enough that the media wants to cover it. But I think part of why it took off the way it did is because Tati was offline at that point because of drama again. So I think that all played into it for sure. Um, Reese Witherspoon, cause legally blonde. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I am definitely Reese and I are definitely, uh, not the same size, but I would allow it a hundred percent. Um, question, where is the murderous conspiracy? <laughs> Don't we all want to know where the murderous conspiracy is? We can keep looking. Um, Diva. Yes. Thank you. Anne Hathaway is too young to play me. Much appreciated. <laughs> Question, late to the party, but could KJ be a key witness to both Toddy and Swanson, or will she have to pick a side? Um, well, do you think the decision was made for K? Do you think the decision was made for KJ as a part of her personal settlement? I think her settlement with the Westbrooks involved her turning over all this information based on her own statements and based on how much we've seen in this lawsuit. But it's not really picking a side because even if she testifies as a witness for the Westbrooks, Swanson will get to cross-examine her and be like, but didn't I say this? And didn't you do this? And then it will become that kind of pissing match. So we'll see. Um, but no, it's not really pick a side. I mean, she's more of a witness for the Westbrooks because she knows what Swanson was saying to her and she clearly gave the Westbrooks that information. Um, <laughs> Fred and George are killing me. I mean, they're adorable. Aren't they fun? So... Uh, question, would he not know, would he not know, would he not not know about the settlement and what was discussed and or that the loss, this lawsuit was prepared? I don't know if they would have gotten his approval on the settlement agreement because they could outvote him at 66%. And because they removed him, I don't know if they would have notified him of this lawsuit or not. So he might not have known until this got filed and he was getting served and he got terminated from the company, like it said in this lawsuit, because they might, they might not. So they might not. Um, I'm going to do just two more questions and then we are definitely going to wrap. You can hear my nose. Um, and you can hear my voice and I still have to record a podcast. Y'all are so, I love that you're deciding um, who's going to play, <laughs> who's going to play these roles. I love it. How long have you been live for two and a half hours? Um, so truth sleuth, <laughs> girl, <laughs> please title your video that no, you don't have to, you'll come up with a way better title. Cause you're super good at that. Um, Welcome to season three of Keeping Up with the Westbrook's Lawsuits. I can't wait to see these lawsuits clipped down with all the video evidence because the timelines are there um, of what we all saw play out online. It's good to see you. I love keeping up with your videos and I appreciate you. Good to see you. All right, y'all. We have got to go. This is wild. Thank you, everybody, for being like, wrap it up. I'm actually very hungry. <laughs> we need to wrap it up. Uh, Jason Statham to play Saltsy. <laughs> I love that you guys have cast, have cast this whole thing. I like Emily Blunt as Tati. <laughs> I, I really do. Um, anyway, who will play Fred and George in the movie of this? I'll allow them to be, to be show pets. All right, y'all. This was an extra ride. We will, we will hopefully just be doing two next week. Tuesday and Friday. If anything else pops off on social or pops off with the Britney case, I will do Instagram reels and post them on, on Twitter about it. So if you guys follow me on YouTube, follow me on social as well at the Emily D Baker. If you have not liked and subscribed, go ahead. We're almost at 142,000. This is some really interesting stuff because not only do we have like the social media side of all of this, but we have like all this corporate malfeasance that's so um, so interesting. So we have like really kind of high level corporate operations and, you know, the supply chain deals and the payment terms. But then we also have like, Oh my God, James totally told James to send you that text message. So you're totally, he's trying to manipulate you. You should put that video back up. Like we have like junior high meets high level multi-million dollar business. And it's wild 
to me and I'm living for it. And I think you're living for it too. So we'll be following this. I mean, the amount of court alerts that I have on, I alluded to this earlier and forgot to say it. The amount of court alerts I have on with Toddy Westbrook, Tatiana Westbrook, James Westbrook, Clark Swanson, Halo Beauty, Halo Beauty Inc., Halo Beauty LLC, Halo Beauty Partners LLC. Because since KJ gave that statement saying Clark Swanson was the source, I speculated then it's it's a matter of time before this comes up in either the business partner lawsuit or in a lawsuit. And so for the last month, I've been kind of like, are we going to see a lawsuit? Are we not going to see a lawsuit? Are we going to see it come out in the other lawsuit? Is it, there going to be a counterclaim or a cross complaint? So we're going to keep watching. Thank you. Thank you for being here live on a Saturday. It seemed like for a lot of you, Saturday worked really well. Um, and so I'm going to keep that in consideration. I'm going to put up a poll for the members and see if the occasional Saturday video works well now that we're getting back to work, back to life, back to reality with a workplace being like, you know, in person and stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's like 17 wrap ups. I mean, Mr. Unicorn, same, same, same. Same. We love law school. We love law. We love we love the the legal side of it, but we love the T too. Um, how many lives did we do this week? I don't, Ben. I don't know. Um, a lot. And I've also given like multiple podcast interviews this week. I did morning radio this week. I've talked a lot this week. And so my kids, when I'm done streaming, my kids are like, "We want to talk," and I'm like, oh, "I get it. I get it." Um, what law school makes the Westbrook's lawsuits into a class? I mean, I might start my own law school, like Twitter school of law. I saw some of the Britney law accounts doing the like Britney Spears school of law. We've covered quite a lot. We've covered business formations. We've covered civil. We've covered criminal. We've got murderous conspiracies. It is, it is a lifetime movie. Thank you, everybody. A huge, huge thank you to the mods for writing so many times this week to cover these stories as they break. Um, we had a lot of weeks there where it was just, Tuesday and Friday and a podcast on Wednesday. And now it's like, fuck, everything is happening. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a law nerd. Like, subscribe. May the odds be ever in your favor. I will see you in the next one. Bye, friends. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube 